Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium in Memphis, Tennessee. Cat Sports presents the 1984 Liberty Bowl. This year, it's the Tigers of Auburn University taking on the Razorbacks of the University of Arkansas. The 1984 Liberty Bowl is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. And by U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by the 4,200 investment executives of Payne Weber in more than 285 offices nationwide. It's a standing room only in Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium. Over 50,000 fans are here for the 26th annual Liberty Bowl. It's Harvard University taking on the University of Arkansas. Hi, my name is Greg Carr, linebacker from Auburn University. We had a good football team this year. We're looking forward to playing in the Liberty Bowl against the Arkansas Razorbacks. And I tell you what, you better stay tuned because I think you're fixing to see a good football game. I'm Brad Taylor, quarterback from the University of Arkansas. We've had a good year, too. I can't think of a better place to be than right here in Memphis, Tennessee, playing Auburn Tigers in the Liberty Bowl. Like Greg said, stay tuned. This is going to be a heck of a football game. Hi, everybody. I'm Kurt Gowdy. To call the play-by-play, -play, Len Dawson, the former great quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs, will analyze this game for you. And you know Len is tricky coaching a bowl team. You never know how to get them ready. Do you work them hard or do they have fun? And I don't think the coaches really know until the kickoff whether their team is ready for postseason play. You're absolutely right. As a matter of fact, Ken Hatfield, when he was at Air Force, said he only practiced a day and a half getting ready for a bowl game a couple of years ago, and they played the best game that they played all year long. These teams have not worked that long or that hard. They really don't have to. They put in a grueling season, and they're going to be ready for this football game today. Now, Arkansas has outweighed 30 pounds to a man. They're playing for the first time on natural grass. They're worried that their speed might be slowed down. Well, the defense defense of Arkansas is the type that they really have to swarm that ball carry. And they got to utilize the quickness that they have to get to the ball carry to stop a very powerful running attack for Auburn. So I don't think the field is in that bad of shape, so it shouldn't be that big of a problem. We've had a light rain off and on before the game. It is not raining now. The excitement is building here in the standing room only crowd at the Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium. And we'll have more in tonight's game and the pageantry in just a moment. An indication of what will be going on. Liberty Bowl is going to be the theme, by the way, of our very colorful halftime pageantry. Walking out on the field right now, there she is, our lady. And walking out on the field right now are some of the seniors of Auburn who will represent their team as captains for the coin toss. But before we have that coin toss, Marguerite Piazza is going to sing our national anthem. Let's go down Ladies the and gentlemen, to honor America, please rise and join Miss Marguerite Piazza and the University of Arkansas Marching Razorback Band in singing our national anthem.
In just a moment, the Auburn and Arkansas teams will be coming out. We'll go down to the field and meet the captain and have the toss of the coin. Auburn picked in preseason to win the national title. A disappointing season, says Pat Dye, and he's really going to work him next year and bring practice and go. And he counts this game, Len Dawson, as part of the 85 season. Well, they, they lost their last football game, and they want to put that behind them. They want to end the season at, on a winning note, begin the new season on a winning note, because this is a, a team now that has a great deal of pride. They have a great expectations in the future. They want to be national champions. Pat Dye has had the best record in the first four years of any other head coach. Here are the Razorbacks. Kurt, I think you can tell they're going to have somewhat of an advantage because of the many fans uh, of the Arkansas Razorbacks are here this evening. And you're going to see a great deal of red in this stadium tonight. They sold 15,000 tickets. Auburn has about 7,500 fans here. Auburn returns some tickets, and the Arkansas folks gobble them up. And there's Ken Hatfield. Well, what a tremendous job he has done here in Arkansas. Seven, three, and one. The three losses just by a total of 10 points. He returns to Arkansas. Born and reared in Helena, Arkansas. Played on the Arkansas National Championship team of 1964. In fact, he ran a punt back 81 yards to beat Texas. And Texas at that time was ranked number one. I think we're at the middle of the field. We're seeing all the seniors from both Auburn and Arkansas going to the middle of the field. Their last Captain football nice game. To Captain Man, nice to meet you. Captain Todd, Captain Man, I'd like to introduce you to Captain El Captain Elliot, Captain Garrison, and Captain Jones. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Gentlemen, good luck to both teams. I'd like to introduce my fellow officials from the Sephora organization. Gene Steratore is your back judge. Jim Twitty is your fifth line judge. John Goldman, your linesman. George Cullen, your field judge. And Ron Abdow is your umpire. Gentlemen, you are the visiting team. You'll call the class in the air. Heads he calls. It's a tails, right? Red, you have a choice. You want to use it this half or you want to delay it? We'll take it the second half. Okay. Red has won the toss and have deferred. Kick receiver, choose a goal. Okay, gentlemen, they want the football went in. Would you like to defend? Would, like to defend Would you put your backs over here, please? Okay, White over here. Okay, White has won the toss and going to receive, right? Gentlemen, good luck. Let's have a good ball. And uh, handling the coin toss was a referee, William McDonald. I really like that new role in college football. If you win the toss at the beginning of the game, you have the opportunity to, to take the ball right now or wait till the second half because generally you don't have an option. But in that second half, if you're, if you're behind, you want that football. We have a slight breeze that Arkansas will have in the first quarter. That's to the goal on your right. Auburn wanted the ball. They're in white. They're going to receive on your left. There's Ken Hatfield. Ten years at the Air Force. Before that at Army in Tennessee. He was the college coach of the year in 1983 when the Air Force won 10 and lost two. It's 60 degrees. Far different from last year. Ten below zero wind chill last year when Boston College met Notre Dame. The slight breeze is around four or five miles an hour. And they have a little rain tonight, but it's sort of like a, a spring night. Yes, it's a really a fresh evening, and fortunately, I think the wind is not a factor in this football game. Brent Fullwood is in the middle. And kicking off here. Horn is going to kick off. Horn. Now, you might say this, this young man is a terrific returner, Brent Fullwood. He once returned three kickoffs for touchdowns in a high school game. Took ten kickoffs and returned all ten for touchdowns in his senior year in high school. As you saw the note, he led the Southeast Conference to kickoff returns, averaging 23 yards of return. We're waiting for Greg Horn. Here it is, and the Liberty Bowl game is underway. It's a squibbler. 
bounds into the end zone. It'll be down for the touchback. And Auburn will put the ball in play on their own 20. Pat Washington will be the quarterback. Brent Fullwood, Bo Jackson are the halfbacks. Tommy Ag is the fullback. Clayton Duford is split in, and Ron Middleton is the tight end. Eric Floyd, Steve Wilson, Ben Tamborello, Randy Stokes, Stacy Searle, the inside lineman. Coach Pat Dye indicated to us, Kurt, that he's going to play a great number of people in this football game today, particularly in the first half. Running the ball, Bo Jackson. Jackson, you know, in the second game of the season against Texas, had a uh, fractured collarbone. He missed six games and came back. Here's the defense. Arkansas has Raven Caldwell, Gerald Jones, a freshman, Tony Cherico, Mark Lee, Nick Miller, David Basil, the leading tacklers, the two men, Miller and Basil, Anderson, Wyatt, Laster, and Joe. A great secondary, by the way, for Arkansas. Pat Dye says it's the best that... Auburn will face this year. Second down, eight, Auburn. There's a quick pass, and it is complete to the 33-yard line to Freddie Wiggins. Wiggins only a freshman. He already has broken the freshman receiving record of Terry Beasley. Ken Hatfield had his defense working on strategy to stop Auburn. It didn't stop him that last play. But here's what Hatfield's worried about. When Auburn has the football, the real key will be stopping their power sweep and all their power attack. They're so big and physical that we can't let them get a chance to, to break a crack. Once we do that, we got to be concerned about the deep passing game because they can score in a hurry. Now they got a quick pitch to Brent Fullwood. Fullwood from the 32 to his 34-yard line, nailed there by Raven Caldwell. Kurt, I think you can see it. Arkansas, the type of defense they play. They are a swarming type of defensive uh, unit, and you're not going to get a great deal of yards running sideways. I think against Arkansas, if you're going to attack them, you must attack them straight ahead. Auburn does have the advantage in weight. They have outweigh 30 pounds per man as the average. It is second down, eight. Auburn on its 34. Here's the option. The pitch to Jackson. Jackson is hit and hammered down at the 33 yard. Raven Caldwell, the defensive end, a junior who made a lot of big plays for the Razorbacks this year. There you have it. There you see the quickness of Arkansas chasing after the ball carrier. They're going to take away the inside move to the fullback. Take, take that away right there. You see the linebacker. He takes care of that. Now the quarterback is tackled, forcing them to pitch the ball out. Caldwell is out there, makes the stop. Nobody touches him. The quickness of Arkansas made that play. As I said, if you're going to go at Arkansas, you better go straight at them. Third down and 10 for Auburn. No score early in this game. Setting up is Washington. The quick pass is incomplete down the sideline. And ten for Brent Fullman coming out of the backfield. Mark Lee has break it up. Auburn has been stopped, and they'll go into a punt formation with fourth and ten. That time the quarterback was looking to his right. He was looking to his split end, but he was going against man-to-man -man Kevin White, who does an outstanding job. He was all conference for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Arkansas will put man-to-man -man coverage on the receivers for Auburn. Lewis Colbert, who's averaged 37 yards a punt, that's net punting, will kick to Bobby Joe Edmonds, one of the best returners in the Southwest Conference. He's dangerous. Edmonds calling for a fair catch on his 28-yard line, and we'll watch Arkansas go on the attack now for the first time in the game. That was a 40-yard punt. So the defensive unit for Arkansas did their job the first time that Auburn had the football stopping the wishbone, forcing them into a passing situation. And when they did that, they got tight coverage on the wide receiver or split in. Well, we have no score. 12-31 remaining in the first quarter. Auburn against Arkansas. At the end of tonight's game, Len and I will be announcing the Mercedes-Benz most valuable player from each team. The Razorbacks in red are with our jersey on their first play from scrimmage. They have an opening over the 30 to the 37 is Bobby Joe Edmonds. Edmonds is the best runner on the team. That is the most dangerous. He's a breakaway man. The leading ball carrier has been the fullback, Marshall Foreman, who is a little power guy straight up the middle. That tackle was made 
by the right cornerback Alvin Brick. There's Taylor at quarterback, Edmonds, Miller, Foreman in the backfield, James Shebest, best receiver in the Southwest Conference, Williams, Irie, Upchurch, Elliott, McGee. On second down, Scott Cole is Marshall Foreman. He's the first leg of the triple option. They either give or fake to the fullback. Then the quarterback can keep or pitch out to the trailer. There's the defense. Green, Williams, Hallman, Thomas, the leading tackler in the team, and Daly. Hard All-American linebacker, Ben McCurdy. Secondary, Briggs, Robinson, Caesar, and Johnson. It has been vulnerable this year, the Auburn secondary. They've had some injury problems in the secondary, and I look for Arkansas to throw that football on them. Third down and two. They run the ball over the 40. The keeper by Brad Taylor, the Arkansas quarterback, and he has a first down. Well, Pat Dye, the opposing defense, the core team is just one of the many worries that Coach has, and here's what's on Dye's mind about Arkansas. thing we've got to do is stop the pullback from running inside and carry out our option responsibilities and not give up the big play on the passing game. Hurt they were able to do that the first time the fullback ran the ball but they left the other options open. Arkansas throwing and it is complete at the 40 down to the 35 down to the 32 yard line is Eddie White the tight end number 28 a 24 yard play. This play is a play action type of pass. He's faking it like the option, but comes back, pulls up, and fires. It's man to man coverage in the secondary and an outstanding throw. This young quarterback has got a terrific arm, Kurt. He can throw that ball 75 or 80 yards. That's that's a that's a professional type of arm for a quarterback. He's the all-time offensive leader for the University of Arkansas. And I, you know the Taylor from Danville, Arkansas. Hatfield said he could not set and run all the time or throw all the time. He had to mix things up. First down. He got rid of the ball to Foreman. Looked like they tackled the quarterback as he started down the line of scrimmage, but he'd already handed off to his fullback, Marshall Foreman. Well, we heard Coach Dye talk about we've got to stop the fullback. Well, the first two times the fullback has run with the football, they really have closed that particular part of the option. But the problem is when you do that, you may be vulnerable in other areas. Second down, 10, Arkansas on the Auburn 32, no score. Ten minutes to go in the first period. Taylor fading. Throws it out. It's complete to Edmonds. Edmonds trying to shake and go, and he squirms his way down to the 21-yard line of Auburn, where he's hit by Ben McCurdy, number 52. 11-yard gain should give him a first down. One thing about Arkansas is they had two or three receivers downfield in a hurry, ordinarily from that wishbone type of uh, offense you don't have it. This was his secondary or outlet man. And he came back to his running back, Edmonds. He's trying to put a move on the, the linebacker. The linebacker just waiting for him to make his final move before he made the tackle. But here I think we're seeing Arkansas really mixing it up. The first time they've had the football, they're on a very good drive. The best went out. Looters came in. The handoff. The man's hit at the 20 and down. And that's Bobby Joe Edmonds sort of coming off a wing. On a reverse knocked down at the 20-yard line of Auburn. He's hit there by uh, Alvin Briggs, the cornerback, as Pat Dye watches his team defend down there deep in their territory. Second down, nine for the Razorbacks. Dye was really concerned about this football game, whether his team was really going to be ready to play or not, because they had a, a tough loss to Alabama, knocked them out of the Sugar Bowl. Second down, nine, Arkansas. Taylor keeps the ball, and he's knocked down at the 25. That's number 52, Ben McCurdy, the linebacker, who came slashing through to taking down a five-yard loss. It'll be third and 14. Terrific job defensively. As you take a look, the, the fullback really was open. He could have given the football to him, but McCurdy came through. He had one thing in mind. He was going for the quarterback, and you can see the other defensive players for Auburn. They were taking away the pitch, so the one option that really was open was to the fullback that time. This is the ninth play of the drive. Arkansas started on their own 28. Third down and 14. A draw play to the 20, to the 15, and to the 14 is Marshall Foreman. Foreman's only 5'9", but he's explosive. He weighs 190, averaged four and a half yards of carry this year. He's got terrific speed. This was a draw play, and he gets an outstanding block from 
Carl Miller, number 30, as you see right there, makes a good block, enables him to get past the linebacker, McCurdy, and pick up good yardage. Good execution by both the running back and also his teammate, the, uh, the blocking back, Miller, who made a good block. Greg Horn will try the field goal, 32-yard attempt. He hit only 10 out of 18 this year. In fact, Arkansas made only 12 out of 25 field goals. Here's a kick. It's a 31-yard attempt. The kick is good. And Arkansas is on the board first. With 7.27 remaining in the first period. 31-yard field goal by Greg Horn. There's a pause in the action here at the Liberty Bowl. We'll be right back. This is the Cat Sports Network. Arkansas dominating so far in the first quarter. They were slight underdogs. Well, in that drive, they had seven runs and two passes. But the important thing, Kurt, I think is those two passes were complete for 35 yards. This Arkansas team held four Southwest Conference polls this year without a touchdown. Here's the kick by Horn. Fullwood backpedaling in the end zone. And he'll down it. It'll be first down Auburn on the old 20 yard line. Now, this is a relentless swarming defense based on quickness and determination that Arkansas possesses. And they also create turnovers, Kurt. They do an outstanding job of that. As a matter of fact, they've uh, you know, re re recovered 24 fumbles so far this year. I get a kick out of the Arkansas fans. They said uh, a couple of them to me, they wait till we get some talent. Yeah. So we don't have any talent this year. We're just playing with great enthusiasm and, and drive. First down, Auburn. Breaking through to the 25-yard line is number 36. That's Reggie Ware, who now a freshman from Huntsville, Alabama, has gone in at fullback. And he's brought down by David Basil, the leading tackler this year for the Razorbacks. Second down, five. We look for Auburn, Lenny, to go right at them. They're bigger, they're stronger, and that may be their best chance. And I think that's the one concern that uh, Arkansas has, that you know they could be out-muscled up there. Bo Jackson is to the 27 yard line. You notice great penetration by this defensive unit of Arkansas. They are really quick, and that's what they have to utilize. And I think that was a, one of the concerns of the coaching staff because it was raining here today and they're playing on natural turf. They were fearful that they wouldn't get the good first from the start that they ordinarily do on the uh, synthetic turf that they, they play on. It's third down and three for Auburn. Ray Gaines was over here at the sideline. Well, Gaines went off sides. He did have an opportunity to get back, but the official did throw the flag. He was way out there, and he moved. The official dropped the flag, and now it'll be third down eight instead of third and three for the Auburn Tigers. Yes, and Auburn does not like to be placed in this situation because it's now a passing situation. Dead ball foul. Encroachment in the neutral zone. Offense. Repeat third down. Third and eight. Well, that probably has changed their call. Pat Washington, the quarterback. There's a pitch coming wide. Full run out to the 30, going hard to 35, and plows his way up to the 37. Brent Fuller, just a sophomore. The 15-yard gain, and he's hauled down by Nick Miller, number 47, the linebacker. You would think ordinarily in a situation like that, third and eight, it would be a passing down, but not necessarily so for Auburn. Now, on that last play, Fuller made a nice run, but a terrific block by Bo Jackson. Now, he has the lead block. He's got to kick out that, that cornerback, and he did a terrific job of doing it. Keeping the ball is Washington. He's going deep, deep, deep to Reagan. And it is incomplete and nearly intercepted by Kevin Wyatt, number seven, who had five interceptions this year for the Razorbacks. That little freshman is going to be a great star at Auburn before he's through Freddie Wigan. You wonder if Washington has an arm. He's got an arm, but boy, he overthrew this pass, and Wyatt really was the only one. Take a look at where it's going. Wyatt is the only one who had a shot at it. It went right between his arms. You know, if he were the receiver, the quarterback would say, don't come back to the to the huddle. You drop the pass like that. But you see the terrific uh, coverage that Arkansas is able 
to put on opposition. Man-to-man -man coverage. Clayton Buford goes in along with Freddie Wigan, two wide receivers, and shot pulled at the 38-yard line is Bo Jackson. Jackson, along with Doug Flutie, was favored for the Heisman Trophy this year. He hurt an ankle in the opening game against Miami. Then he hurt uh, the shoulder against Texas, set out most of the year, and still had over 400 yards. 99 is Rod, Rod, Rodney Beecham. Now, he just takes the man on right there on the line of scrimmage, makes sure he's not pushed out of the way, and comes in. Look at one, two, three, four red shirts around that ball carrier. Well, they get out of the old wishbone. They put Jackson in the slot. Third and eight again. They'll throw the ball. Washington heaves it. Complete to Jackson. The speed to the 50. Still going. 40. Still going. And taken from behind. He may have stepped out of bounds on the 36, though. I believe he did. That shows you when he gets outside oh. and put him one and one in that secondary, he can he can take the right to Kurt, the Kurt, they line. had the angle on him even. 34 is Bo Jackson. He is a, not the primary receiver. Washington finally gets him the ball, but you can see they have the angle on him. And he just outruns everybody to the sidelines. 4-2 speed in the 40. Now he steps, steps out of bounds there, there but <laughs> tremendous speed. Very few backs in the country will be able to take that football in the position he was in and outrun the coverage. So another big third down play by Auburn. Right up the middle they go that time with Raven Caldwell hitting Tommy Agee. He takes him at the 35 of Arkansas. Arkansas plugging up the middle. Auburn had two times third and eight and converted both of them. A terrific job they did too. One was a running play and the other was a pass. The pass play actually was an outlet pass to Bo Jackson, but he's a pretty good man to get the football through in a situation like that. Second down, nine, Auburn on the Arkansas 35. Arkansas ahead, three to nothing. There goes the pitch this time to Tim Jesse, who's entered the game. He's a backup halfback to Jackson. He's taken out of bounds on the 28 by Greg Lasker, the safety man of Arkansas. We're seeing now what the Coach Pat Dye was telling us, that he was going to play a lot of people in this football game, particularly in the first half, to see what they can do under game conditions. It's not that they haven't played before, but they haven't had a great deal of playing time. He said the first half, he said, because if I don't get them in the first half, I'll probably forget about them and won't use them at all, because the second half is strictly for winning. All right. Forward, Jesse Ware. Third down and two. Forward, piled up short of the 25, and he's hit there by David Basil and Nick Miller, who got to him first, the two linebackers. He's close to the first down. Let's take a look at that play from the end zone. You can see that Arkansas is really swarming. They're veering to that side. They guessed right. The defense was veering toward the side. The ball carrier is running with the football. They were able to get penetration and make the stop. Bringing out the change right now to see what the situation is as far as first down. 3.51 to go in the first period. Arkansas leading 3-0 on a 31-yard field goal by Greg Horn. First down, Auburn. And this drive started at the Auburn 20. They're now at the Arkansas 26. Auburn has just tremendous speed, team speed in all the positions. You know, the running backs and the wide receivers for the split end, they really have terrific speed, and that's the one ingredient in football that is so important. Tim Jesse checks in for Bo Jackson. Up they come, Auburn Tigers, first down on the Arkansas 26. In the wishbone. Washington throwing into the end zone, and uh, the pass... The Buford there, no good. Broken up by Kevin Anderson, number two. The oh, right it's, corner. Oh, it's, it's good, Kurt. It's, it's good. good. How they say yeah. it's good. Yeah, it's good down there. Here it is, flanking the play action pass, coming back in the pocket. He really drills this football. Good, strong arms. You can see it's coming right at you. He makes the reception on about the two or three yard line. So another big play for Auburn. And the reason they're able to do that is because Arkansas is playing the man to man. They're putting eight people up on or near that line of scrimmage. One official waved it incomplete. I guess the, the back of the receiver was going. There's Jackson. Jackson over. Bo Jackson plows over for the score. And Auburn has the lead. They mark 80 yards, converting two big third and eight situations. Here it is, the big halfback. 
Bo Jackson, 222 pounds of him. He's a pretty good guy to get the football to, and you see they pitch it to him. They want the ball in his hands right away so that he can he can take off and move any way that he wants to. The ball is to him right away. This is not an option here. Get the ball to Bo Jackson, and you can see the strength of this young man carrying a man into the end zone. Robert McGinney has hit 31 out of 32 extra points. Mike Manholy, the kick is up, and the kick is no good. No good. So, with three minutes to go in the first period, the score is Auburn six and Arkansas three. Eleven plays, 80 yards, four minutes, 27 seconds. Bo Jackson, two-yard run. That was the score. They missed the extra point, though, so it's six to three in favor of Auburn. Three minutes to go in the first period. There's War Eagle. We saw War Eagle in the lobby of the hotel. And everybody was up petting it. The bird was <laughs> very tame, but... Uh, but not you and I. No, I, I've seen a few of those. Robert McGinney will kick off. Down and around, and it's... Uh, well, he runs it out. He didn't have to. He gave it the momentum. Carl Miller fumbled the ball and went in the end zone. And his emphasis put it in there, so all he had to do was down it. But Kevin Green came down to make the tackle. And what they should have done, they should have had some communication. There's the Payne Weber balloon. They're one of our sponsors this season. Pretty balloon. Yes, it is. It's right outside, as you see, right outside of the stadium. That well, was pretty coverage, too, by Kevin Green for uh, Auburn when he went down and tackled Miller. He should, there was no yeah, communication he, back there because, first of all, it should have been caught on about the four-yard line by one of them. Then, secondly, once you went in the end zone, you put, put your hand on it and your knee down, go to the 20-yard line. Bobby Joe Edmonds, Marshall Foreman. Ooh, a real hit there on Bobby Joe Edmonds by Gerald Williams, the left tackle. Auburn playing tough football now. Boy, they really are Gerald Williams. He's one of the big guys. He's 6'3", 270 pounds, and here you are. Coming right at it. You're looking from the end zone. You can see what it looks like. You can almost feel what it's like to take a shot like that. Good play by the defensive line of Auburn. Boy, they're fired up now. They looked a little listless in that first drive that Arkansas came out, but they look fired up right now. Second down 12 for Arkansas. Terry Tatum is down in. He's running around the five. That's Marshall Foreman. And they drop him at the seven. That's Gerald Williams again from Valley, Alabama, a 271-pound junior. Well, they're a big physical football team, both offensively and defensively. I'm talking about the Auburn Tigers. If they get you in a hole, they want to make sure that they keep you there. Big down coming up for Arkansas because if they don't make a first down, they're going to give that football back to Auburn in excellent field position. Third and ten for Arkansas. Tebus has gone in and loaded two wide receivers. Tebus is number 25. Great pair of hands on him. Taylor from the end zone. Throws it to the far side. The catch. It's good. It's good to Bobby Joe Edmonds. A leaping grab. It'll be a first down Arkansas. And gives them some breathing room. Talking to the coaching staff, they, they felt that this young man, Taylor, has got an outstanding arm and he's got an excellent touch. And you can see he makes a good throw over the linebacker and away from the other linebacker right into the arms of Edmonds. Good play, a big play, because they maintain possession of that football. 18-yard pickup. Tatum is out. Carl Miller's in. First down, Razorbacks in their 24. What they can do against Auburn is throw the football. There's a throw. It is intercepted by number three, Kevin Porter. Porter's at the 10 and runs it in for the score. It was a bad pass that time. Threw it right in the arms of the cornerback, Kevin Porter. And Auburn has scored two touchdowns here in a space of two minutes. Right away, I say that they throw the football, and that was a terrible throw because it was really underthrown. The problem is you see him backing up. When you're backing up throwing the football, you can't get a great deal of velocity unless you have really an exceptional arm. That time, really underthrown. Porter was right there, made the interception into the end zone for a touchdown. A big break now for Auburn. Really big break. They're going to have to go for two points now. 
Evan Porter returned that one about 35 yards. The one thing you can't do as a quarterback, you can't be falling away from the receiver when you're throwing it. You want to step into it toward the receiver. Just like a baseball pitcher. I, I remember the quarterback better. I saw falling backwards with a hard rush by the Green Bay Packers in Super Bowl one. Yes. Remember that? Willie ended, Wood picked it off. Do I remember? It yeah. ended up the same way that just Yeah, you were you were being hit and falling backwards and threw the ball. They're going for two. They'll throw for it. That Washington foul. And it's good. It's good. They get the two points. Well, Auburn now in a flurry. That makes it 14 to 3 in favor of Auburn with a minute and 17 seconds to go in the first period. Well, the Tigers are hooping it up. Two quick touchdowns, one by the offense, one by the defense. And Washington ran it in for the two points. This boot is deep again, and this time Carl Miller wisely downs it. Take Let's a watch the two points. All right, yes. Yeah. We're so high up, it's hard to see, but here it is. Washington coming back, and he really has a lot of time to throw the football. He's looking all over the place. He pumps it, and he brings the thing, his arm down, and he's got excellent speed. He runs about a 4-4 a four, four, or about 4-5-40, uh, and he just slides into the end zone for the two points. 14 points on the board now. There's a big play for, for Auburn. That guy uh, told us that he played three quarterbacks in the first half. I don't know whether he will or not now with his team going well. Danny Nutt has replaced Brad Taylor for Arkansas at quarterback. Danny Nutt from Little Rock. Uh, Taylor was hurt a couple games, and Nutt was a very capable replacement for him. Uh, the ball gives it off to Derek Thomas, the second string fullback, and the second leading rusher on the team. He goes to the 22, where he ran into Greg Carr. By the way, Greg Carr, number 54, had just been named one of the top five NCAA scholar, athlete, leaders, whatever, citizens in the college realm in America. I've had the opportunity to chat with him when I visited Auburn's campus, and he really is a, an outstanding young individual. Second down, eight, the Razorbacks on their 22. Danny Nutt fires down the middle. It's completed to 40 on the crossing pattern with James Seabest, number 25. He's taken down by Greg Carr. Seabest hasn't dropped a ball this year, but he's had his hands on it. He has terrific hands, and he has a feel for where the open area is. This is the zone back here. Now the quarterback's going to have to get it over that linebacker. You see, he does that. Carr is the linebacker. He gets it over him. You can see the other wide receiver downfield cleared out the area and able Shebes to come into that vacated spot. Against SMU, Shebes caught 13 passes for 199 yards. He averaged 17.8 a reception. He led the conference in yards receiving and passing. The toss, that's over the head that time. Well, they were claiming some interference. The pass was intended for Steve Young, Theo Young, the third string tied in 87. Alvin Bridge was over him. He was claiming that when he was ready to make his move to the outside, that he was grabbed by the defensive back. But that quarterback threw the football, not threw the ball way before the tight end made his final move. There are the figures on Danny Nutt. Coming in is Eddie White now, the starting tight end. That's the time remaining, seven seconds. It's probably, unless it's a quick pass and complete, will be the last play of the first quarter. Second down, ten. He tried to run a quick signal count. Everybody meshing down there at the line of scrimmage. Elliott McGee might have moved the right guard, right tackle. Then Thomas points to his bench and says, "Hey, they moved, coach. It's a legal procedure against Arkansas." And they'll put the ball on the Arkansas 41. It'll be second down and 15. Arkansas in this football game plans to go Dead on ball the quick penalty. Ball start. First down. Plan to go on a quick count a lot because they do not want Auburn to play those games out there, jumping around, shifting from one spot to another. They want to make them show exactly what they're going to do defensively as soon as they get up to the line of scrimmage. 
Second down and 15. They'll run the draw play to Derek Thomas, and it doesn't get him much to their 43 yard line. Greg Carr stopped him as the horn sounds at the end of the first quarter of the 26th annual Liberty Bowl game with a score Auburn 14 and Arkansas 3. Kurt Gowdy and Len Dawson will begin the second quarter of the Liberty Bowl game. 14 to 3 Auburn. It's a third down and 13 for Arkansas. Danny Nutt on the move. Throws on the run. The pass broken up. It was intended at the 40-yard line for Eddie White to tie it in and broken up by Alvin Briggs, the left cornerback. So it's fourth and 13. He had Shebest down deep or deeper than, than White, and White coming underneath. And you notice that time the quarterback was rolling, trying to get away from the heat, from the pressure of that rush of the big defensive front of Auburn University. Start out back in the pocket first, and they roll one way or another time, or the other way. That time he rolled to the right. That's Greg Horn, an excellent punter. He's averaged 43.8 yards a kick this year. And Trey Gaines, a wide receiver, is a safety man for Auburn. And the kick is shanked out on top. Gets a roll, though, for Arkansas and goes out of bounds just short of the 20-yard line. No return, so it didn't turn out that disastrous as Greg Horn shakes his head. What did I do wrong? I didn't average 44 yards shanking him. 36-yard punt. We'll be back with the score. Auburn 14, Arkansas 3. Hi, my name is Bo Jackson, running back for Auburn University football team. I hope you're enjoying the holiday season. And on behalf of the Auburn University football team, we wish you a very happy new year. Incredible athlete, Bo Jackson, a baseball star, a 100-meter man, track and field star, everything. Auburn trying to run up the middle. Tim Jesse, number 25, is met by Gerald Jones and David Basil. Jones playing left tackle. First quarter stats coming up. And let's see how they did. Well, the interception really was the biggest. Yes, the interception was the big, big play for Auburn. And this is actually the, the second time they've had, the third time they've had possession of the football. I believe. Second down nine for the Auburn Tigers. Give to the first man through That's Reggie Ware, a freshman from Huntsville. They're high on him for the future. David Basil and Tony Cherico on the tackle. Auburn has only one senior on its offensive team, five starting seniors on the defense. Arkansas has four seniors on its offense, only one senior on its outstanding defensive unit. So both teams return a strong nucleus for next year. Third down, seven. Washington fires. He's got a man open on the 40. That's Trey Gaines. Cairo, Georgia, the sophomore, tackled by Kevin Anderson in the secondary. The reason that was the, yards. the reason that was completed, boy, he had all the time in the world. You're taking a look at what it's like to get the ball from the center, but look at it. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,000. Boy, he had all the time in the world to get rid of the football. If you give a quarterback five seconds or thereabouts, he's going to find somebody open. He looked all over the field. He left, right, left again, then came back and finally got the ball to his receiver. Two wide receivers and the wishbone set up. Washington keeps the ball. He had ideas of pitching out. You, you can see the big boy can move out from out under that center. You, you give him some room, he has those long strides, and he could hurt you outside on the quarterback keeper. David Basil yeah. took him down, number 53. Yes, if you can get Washington turned up field, he has terrific speed for a quarterback. As I said, he'll run the 40-yard dash in about four, five or four, six, and that's pretty quick for anybody, let alone a quarterback. Plus the fact he can throw the ball 70, 75 yards. Wagon's gone in, it's second down, seven, Auburn. Washington throws a release pass out to the 41 to 45 and up to the 50 yard line and ball it out of bounds. We have a flag down. Kyle Collins, number 23, from Gaston, Alabama, Jr. They're all back next year in this backfield. Fullwood, Campbell, Collins, Agee, Ware, Jackson, Washington. 
Got a motion against uh, Auburn. They're going to bring that play back. But all those people that you mentioned, Kirk, they all have excellent speed, excellent speed. Ken Hatfield, the Arkansas coach. Puts the ball back to the 38 of Auburn. Illegal motion. The offense repeat the down. It's now second down and 12 for Auburn. Auburn's in the lead, 14 to 3. 12, 28 remaining in the first half. Second and 12. Going over the 40 to the 41 is Tim Jesse. Jesse's hit by David Basil. He's in on nearly every tackle. And so is Nick Miller, the other linebacker from Flute, Texas. Well, those are the two linebackers that led uh, Arkansas in tackling this year. And you look at David Basil, you know, he only weighs 211 pounds. That maybe with the weights in his shoes or something when he got on the scale. He's really not that large, but boy, is he quick and he is tenacious. It is now third and nine for Auburn with two wide receivers. He throws to this side to the 45 and up to the 49 is Kyle Collins, the halfback, brought down by Nathan Jones, the rover in the secondary, and David Basil again. Well, now they're short. They're about a yard short, and let's see what they do. I think they're going to punt. They oh, put, yes. They're going to punt. They yeah. put uh, Lewis Colbert in. On fourth down and yeah, one. They got about 22 people out on the field. So they have to call a timeout to figure out what they're going to do. And that's a timeout charge to Auburn. They have two left. So there's a pause in the action here at the Liberty Bowl. We'll be right back. This is the Cat Sports Network. Bobby Joe Edmonds is the safety man. Lewis Colbert's the punter for Auburn. Edmonds is on his 10-yard line. A slight breeze favoring Colbert. And then he boots the powering spiral. That's going to uh, land in the end zone for the touchback. It'll be Arkansas's ball. First down on their 20. Well, coming up at halftime, the Liberty Bowl pageant. All the fans here in Memphis, as well as our television viewers at home, should enjoy. The theme is the Statue of Liberty. That great lady that stands so tall in New York Harbor. Internationally acclaimed opera star Marguerite Piazza, the Shelby Singers, magnificent fireworks, set piece of the statue, and the Auburn U Marching Band and the University of Arkansas Razorback Marching Band. All this at halftime. Pageantry that is time-honored, highly regarded tradition here at the Liberty Bowl. First down, Arkansas from their 20. They pitch to the trailer. He doesn't get much. He comes up, Terry Tatum to the 23-yard line, brought down by Greg Carr, the linebacker, the All-American, pursuing the play. It's one area that that wishbone or flexbone, as Arkansas likes to call it, that they really don't do that well, pitching it to the outside. They've had most of their success giving that football to the fullback inside because he's got that straight shot. If he gets by that linebacker, it's just straight down the field. It's a foot race between he and the defensive backs. You could have a big gainer. Nutt is still in there, quarterback. He's got a quick drop. Now he throws. It's well covered. It's intercepted by Jonathan Robinson of Auburn. Their second interception. And he's down on the Arkansas 45. He threw in a double coverage that time. He had no chance to get the ball to the receiver. He was looking for his back, Bobby Joe Edmonds, and he never should have thrown that football. He was just throwing that up there and hoping. Here it is going back in the pocket after faking the play pass, and here he is throwing it flat-footed. The ball hangs up there. The receiver goes down. Interception number two for Auburn. They're once again in good field position. Well, we'll be back. Auburn has the ball in Arkansas territory, and Auburn's leading 14-3. to three. This is the uh, history of the takeaways, giveaways this year. Minus two for Auburn and a plus 10. In other words, they've taken the ball away more than they've given it up plus 10. That's a good record for the year. And that uh, relentless defense of Arkansas has forced those turnovers. Right now, Auburn has the ball on the Arkansas 45 with a first down. Fullwood going in motion. And it's the fullback, Tommy A.G. from Maplesville, Alabama, who's hit for just a yard gain. And he stopped there 
by Gerald Jones, number 76. Also, Nick Miller, the linebacker, is up involved in that play, and they were looking for that play on first down. And that's a play that they, uh, evidently, the defense was called. They were going to stop that particular play, the fullback coming up the middle. Mann's in a quarterback now, Mike Mann, from Sylacauga, Alabama, a senior. Plan was to play three quarterbacks in the first half. We'll see if Pat Dye does that. Second down, nine. Mix up. Mix up. And he hit. Hey, he's faking here, he's faking there, and then he's hit by Mark Lee, 22, and Ricky Williams, who just went in the lineup, number 57, to replace David Brazel. He had a halfback on the wing, and he was expecting that halfback after faking the ball to the fullback to come back around, but the, the back went the other way, so the quarterback was standing right there with the ball in his hand saying, wait a minute, I don't want it. Arkansas defensive people, they solved that problem because they took him to the turf. Now it's third down and 11. Auburn's been good at these little third and long. Man will throw. It's blocked. And now they have a fourth and 11. And that's Raven Caldwell, who led the Arkansas defenders in sacks this year. He's a big play man, and he deflected that one. Defensive linemen are taught once you get penetration, the quarterback is about to throw the ball. Try to time it. Get up in the air and see if you, maybe you'll get a shot. And there it is right there. Caldwell getting a right hand up in the air, batting that ball away. And for Auburn, it's fortunate it didn't stay up a little longer because the linebacker was right there in a position to intercept. On formation with Colbert, Bobby Joe Edmonds is the safety. He'll try and pooch this one up around the goal line. Fair catch call. Arkansas has the ball again deep in their own. They've had no field position after that opening drive that culminated in the field goal. Since then, they've been pinned back deep in their own territory. 34-yard punt. We'll be back. 14-3 to Auburn in the lead. You know, I'll never forget catching that first fish when I was a boy. That one couldn't have weighed two pounds but it was enough to make me a fisherman for life. Sometimes you just hit on something, and you know it's right for you. And that's the way I feel about my chewing tobacco, too. Levi Garrett's my brand, and I'll tell you why. Taste, pure and simple. It comes in loose leaf or plug, and either way, it's the best tasting chewing tobacco I've ever tried. That's Levi Garrett chewing tobacco. Say goodbye to America's favorite can of motor oil. That Quaker State quality America has trusted for over 70 years now comes exclusively in this unique, easy-to-pour plastic bottle. So long, folks. See you, dirty hands. Goodbye, oily rag. No more leaky cans. Get Quaker State's pen-grade protection and no mess. Easy to open, pour, and reseal. Today, you need an oil this good in a package this good. We've had two turnovers in the game. Arkansas threw the ball away twice. That's been it. They try and scramble up the middle. Danny Nutt, the quarterback from Little Rock. Nothing there. And uh, Auburn's really clamped down on this Arkansas offense. They line. really have. What they've decided to do, they, they sent the defensive lineman straight after the quarterback. They say, forget about the pitch. We don't want him to have the option to run with it down here. So go after the quarterback. Tear his head off if you possibly can. And that's what they did on that last play. They started their drives on their own 28. They're 6, they're 20, the 20, and the 12. It throws the ball to the sideline. It's incomplete. Intended for James Shebest. And some of the Arkansas fans are claiming that Shebest was hooked there around the head by Alvin Briggs, the cornerback. But no, say the official. I think it's a good idea that he threw that ball over his head because Briggs looked like he was in position to make the play. See him? He's coming up. And if the ball hadn't been thrown high, he was in position right there. Now, he did put his right hand on the on the receiver, but I think that was after the ball passed him. But the point I'm trying to make is that the ball had been throwing, thrown lower. That young man, Briggs, would have been in position to make the interception if he did. That's all she wrote. It had been another six points for Auburn. The best and looters are two wide receivers. It's third down and 10. Arkansas's pass complete to the 30. Up to the 35 is Bobby Joe Edmonds as he slithered out of the backfield, but we have a flag down. It uh, could be, I don't know, but they didn't seem to be set for the full second before they snapped that football. That's a legal motion against Arkansas. It'll wipe out the first down they had earned. It'll put them back on their seven-yard line. 
with a third down and 15. Now you've had two quarterbacks in the, in the game for for both sides really and sometimes the new quarterback comes in the case is a little different. Illegal motion. Offense. Repeat third down. Now for Arkansas they cannot afford a turnover again down here in their territory. Well their deepest penetration has been their own 43 yard line in this quarter. Here they are with third and long and pass is intercepted again. At the 14 yard line up with it is Arthur Johnson the strong safety he intercepted a wobbly deflected ball well, the, the quarterback was hit just as he was getting rid of the football and here's a case that he probably should have put that ball under his arm and taken off now here it is you see he is hit just as he releases the ball there is nothing on it just floats up in the air Johnson is there to make the interception and as I said the one thing they could not afford to do in the position they were in is give up the football. Well, they've thrown uh, three interceptions, two of them, one on a hip to the quarterback where it wobbled up. That three interceptions is the high for the season for Arkansas. Here we are just in the second quarter. Yeah, it's been a nightmare second quarter for Arkansas. First down, Auburn. They run off the right tackle, and that is uh, Brent Fullwood, the leading ball carrier, hit by the freshman nose guard, Tony Cherico. Put the ball on the 11-yard line of Auburn. It is second down and seven. You have a team like Auburn. Boy, you don't want to give them opportunities because they're a big, strong, physical team that has exceptional speed in that backfield. They're making things easier for Auburn. They came in here still thinking, I think, about that Alabama loss, but they've forgotten all about that now. This is a second down, seven. Jackson has it. Jackson to the 10. And they stopped him there. His forward motion stopped at the 10. Gang tackled a charge led by Rodney Beecham. Four players, four Arkansas defensive players around Bo Jackson. They are keying on Bo Jackson, and I think that they well should be. Here's the blocking. The defensive lineman sheds that block. He's going out, stretching out the play. And here they are. One, two, three. There's about six defensive players around the football. Jackson's carried the ball six times, gained five yards in the first half. Third down, six. Auburn on the Arkansas 10. Auburn in the lead, 14 to three. The pitch is to Fulva. Fulva is hit and dropped at the 13-yard line. He's stopped by Kevin Wyatt, the cornerback number seven. Boy, he has tremendous speed also because he just slipped the tackle somebody got penetration had the opportunity to tackle about four or five yards deep in the backfield but he got by him Kevin Wyatt junior defensive back from my hometown Kansas City Missouri went to Rockhurst High School an all-conference defensive back a 30-yard field goal attempt by Robert McGinney he has hit three out of five from 30 to 39 yards this year Arkansas defense stiffened and that kick is up the kick is no good they missed it. Auburn had a chance to really pad this lead. They had a first down on the Arkansas 14-yard line. They were stopped on three running plays, and they missed a field goal. They'll be back. It's 14 to three, Auburn. Brad Taylor's back in the lineup. 60 degrees here in Memphis tonight. A beautiful evening. 14 to three, Auburn ahead. Six minutes to go in the half. Brad Taylor hands the ball off to Marshall Foreman. And that uh, first of the options, first of the triple option is not working for Arkansas tonight. They haven't broken anything up the middle. Well, one ben reason, Thomas stopped you know, That was the reason it didn't work. Big Ben Thomas was slanting down to the inside, and his responsibility on that play was to take away that fullback. Did an outstanding job. Ben Thomas led the team in tackles as a defensive lineman. Set an all-time Arkansas record. It's amazing because generally you've got the linebackers who can move from side to side making most of the tackles. Second down, nine. Taylor pass way wide of the mark. His receiver hanging around the uh, Eddie White around the 35-yard line, but it missed him by five or six yards. He busily was covering. Yeah, Taylor had a man open earlier, and he was waving his arms down there. I think it was Shebeth. It was wide open in the middle, but uh, by the time that Taylor got around to locating his receivers downfield, he was no longer open. Shebest has caught only one ball, and they're really on him tonight, Auburn, knowing that he's the best receiver probably in the Southwest Conference. 
And they went out to stop him, and they have so far. Taylor now is three for five for 53 yards. He has a third and nine. He's hit and dropped. That's the first sack of the game, and that's James Don Daly, the right end, who came in and snowed him under. Daly really did a terrific job coming from the right defensive end position. He jumped around his block. That time, the quarterback was rolling to his right, as you're going to see now. Here he is going to his right. Generally, you think that that end on the other side shouldn't get involved in it, but here he comes. He beat his man, grabbed the quarterback, and sacked him. Trey Gaines, who's returned punts for an average of nine yards this year, will receive Greg Horn's punt. Gaines is on his 38. They're going after him. He just got it away. He's knocked down, but there's no flag. He did a little swan dive there, and he brings it back to the 42. And Ricky Williams downfield to make the hit. A 46-yard punt under extreme pressure and a three-yard return. That dive's pointing at something out there. Oh, he definitely wants something called in his favor. <laughs> Every play. Well, things have been going fairly well, I would say, for head coach Pat Dye in this football game. Auburn's ball on their 42-yard line with a first down. 4.37 to go in the half. Auburn leading 14 to 3. Pat Washington, the quarterback. And the hit at the 42-yard line, Bo Jackson. Boy, they have really throttled him tonight. David Basil made the tackle for Arkansas. Arkansas is getting terrific penetration on that defensive line. They're really flying through there. They know they have to to disrupt things. And you can see right here, they're coming through. Good penetration about four yards deep by Basil makes the tackle. As I said before, he's not a very large young man, 6'1", 211 pounds, but boy, is he quick. Second down, 11 for Auburn on their 41. That's a cross buck. Jackson again to the 45-yard line of Auburn. And down there in the bottom of that pile is number... Uh, 64, Tony Cherico and Rodney Beecham, the right side of the Arkansas line. A telecast authorized under broadcasting rights granted by Cat Sport, intended solely for the entertainment of its audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or publication without the express written consent of Cat Sport is prohibited. Arkansas waiting now for the third down play. Auburn has had two golden opportunities the last two possessions they've had to get some points on the board. On third down, they run the draw play. That's the fullback, Taylor, A.G., and A.G. is taken out of bounds on the 50-yard line, short of the first down. It was Kevin Anderson who ran him out. Got a flag on the play. There's a yellow one down there on about the 48-yard line. Against Auburn, Arkansas may decline this unless there's a major penalty. Because... Um, Auburn would have a fourth and two. That's the decision that comes from the sidelines. I can assure you the captain out there is not making that decision. I think they want to take a look too, Kurt, to see just how far short Auburn happens to be. They got a short two yards. Now, we're going to mark this one back to the 36. Holding during the run of the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat third down. I'm sure that Hatfield, the head coach of Arkansas, was concerned that perhaps one or two things that Maybe not necessarily if they would go for it on fourth down, but from where they would be kicking the football, they would be backed up near their end zone once again. So he's he's taking the chance they're going to be able to stop him here on third down. Third down and 16 for Auburn. Washington looking. Look out. He nearly got hit. The pass is over the head and sails into the Arkansas bench. Intended for Trey Gaines to tie it in. And now fourth down, so turned out to be a wise a good decision move, yes. by Arkansas. They had three men going after the quarterback. He actually had a lot of time to throw the football, but they had eight men defending against the pass. And his thinking was, let's take him back uh, several yards. We'll stop him on this third down situation. When they punt, we're going to get better field position. That's a, that's a positive, aggressive type of way of coaching, and I really like that. Lewis Colbert to punt. Bobby Joe Edmonds. A breakaway man is the safety. 
Edmonds takes it on his 24 with a fair catch. And yeah, not great field position, but better what they've enjoyed. It was a 40-yard punt. It's first down. Arkansas on their 24-yard line. Brad Taylor will be the quarterback. 3-0-3 to go in the first half. Arkansas scored first on a 31-yard field goal. Then Auburn drove 80 yards. Bo Jackson went over two yards. It was 6-3. Arkansas missed the extra point at the end of the first quarter. Taylor's toss complete to the 35 to James Sheebus. The ball's to him. He'll catch it. Notice the number. 25. What does that number remind you of another guy with it? Well, he's going to watch that play for the Raiders. Fred Belitman, Fred Belitman, I'll tell you what they're doing. He is just going down about 10 or 12 yards and floating in the middle, finding the open spot in that zone defense. And it's up to the quarterback to get him. Now, Chibest has that knack of finding the open area. There are certain receivers that are capable of doing that, and there are other receivers that maybe have terrific speed and good hands, but have no knack or no knowledge of what the defense is doing back there. Here's the measurement. First down, Arkansas. Boy, not by much, was it? They're on their 35-yard line. They have not had a scoring threat since they got the ball for the first time in the game and drove it right down the field and then hit a 31-yard field goal from their own 20. That's the first Arkansas first down in the second quarter. Taylor running the option, and he gets maybe a yard on it, and that's all. When Harold Hallman, the nose guard, and John Daly knifed in from the right end. Good pursuit by that Auburn defense because they were coming right down that line of scrimmage. The linebackers were handling that situation. They took away, first of all, the fullback going in there on the first option, and also the pitch man was not open either, so the quarterback had no choice but to run with the football. But unfortunately for him, there were three defensive men surrounding him. Carl Miller enters the Arkansas backfield. With second down nine. Taylor throws the ball on the run. It's incom well, is it incomplete? It's deflected over to Sheebus from Bobby Joe Edmonds. It is incomplete. Sheebus nearly caught it before it hit the ground. Quarterback should never have thrown it. Now you take a look here. He's faking, but he had a lot of room to run. He steps up. He could have run with the football right there, but he threw the ball and tried to make a really a delicate pass. Ooh, that's dangerous. And they're very right fortunate that it was not intercepted. And here's the tail end of it. Chibes is coming back, always alert, doing everything he possibly can to try to come up with the football. And you can see it does hit the ground. No, the Lenny, he caught a pass in the end zone against TCU that actually hit the turf. And Chibes says, I knew it, but I came up, held the ball up like it was a touchdown, and I got the touchdown. Here's a draw play to the 40, coming up to the 45, and spilled at the 47 is Marshall Foreman, the fullback, hit in the secondary by Big, Big Beasley, and that'll give him a first down as the clock stops at 135 to go. Really quick fullback. Foreman is one of those speedsters in the backfield. That was a draw play. The quarterback really did an outstanding job of making it look like he was really going to throw the football. He actually went by the fullback and turned around and handed him the football. Theo Young's in a tight end, replacing Eddie White for Arkansas. First down, Razorbacks on their 47. Taylor, right down the middle. Just knocked away. Just knocked away there by Jonathan Robinson. They might have had a touchdown. The pass to the tight end, Theo Young. That's why Young was there. open. Why had he happened. thrown that ball properly, he had his man beaten. He made a move, was going down the middle of the field. They were doubling up on Shebest on the other side, and he was all by himself in the middle, but the pass was thrown behind him. Clock stops with a minute and 15 seconds to go. The one area that's going to be open, that tight end is, is going to be able to get open because they are doubling the split end in the middle of the field is where they have the open. Arkansas fans don't worry much when their team's behind. They were great in the second half this year. Now he throws it into the crowd. Didn't want a chance, another interception. Tenant for Jamie Luter. Arkansas, listen to this. In the fourth quarter this year, has scored 86 points to 27 for the opposition. The fourth period has been by far their best quarter. Well, first of all, they've got an outstanding defensive unit. They're ranked in the top 
10 in the country for giving up the fewest number of points They're only 12.5 points per football game when you look at this game going on this evening it's not been so much the defense that yielded for Arkansas but the offense has turned, turned the ball over three times once for a touchdown Auburn's running true to form the second period has been their best period they scored 130 points in the second quarter to 51 for the opponent that pass wide open drop drop that is Eddie White he had the ball he could turn up field he had a cinch first down what he did is what so many receivers do. You see it game after game is they take their eye off the football. Here it is. He's coming back. He's rolling to his left, comes back to the opposite side, throwing away from the green, hits him right. You see his head move. The ball hit him right in the chest. Now, the thing that you have to do, you mentioned a guy like Balitnikov. He caught the football in his hands all the time. That's what that receiver should have done. Yeah, she best does that, too. Here's the punt. Warren boots it, and they're gambling around. There's a guy for it. Arkansas may have the ball. There's a flag down. He ran into his own man. He ran into a white jersey. That's when he Ricky was going Williams the on the ball, number they're going, 57. They're going to give it, I'm sure. They may say they didn't have a chance to catch it. That's right. You have to give the, the receiver the opportunity to make that catch, whether he makes a fair catch or not. I'll tell you that Trey Gaines, he's a... Uh, the suicidal. Here we're going to take a look, look at this. He runs into his own man right there. It's an interesting call. They called it on Arkansas. And they penalize Arkansas. I'd like to see that again, Kurt. I really would. I will show it to you. Interference with the kicking team with the opportunity to receive a kick. First down. That Washington will bring his team up on their own 37, a first down. Auburn's leading 14 to 3. And we have 52 seconds to go in the first half. We have an outstanding halftime show for you. Statue of Liberty. And we'll also review the 1984 college football season. Glenn Dawson will bring you some of the exciting action that happened this year. Washington keeps it to the 40, a flag down. He rolls up to the 43 of Auburn. Immediately calls timeout. Well, they shouldn't have called timeout because his clock is stopped anyway because of the penalty. Mark Lee was over there. This is a holding call against Auburn. Well, they're going to be penalized back to about the 27. I believe I would accept this penalty. Three turnovers, uh, turnovers in the game, all against Arkansas. Three pass interceptions in the secondary by Auburn. Holding during the run on the offense, 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. 40, 46 seconds remaining in this first half. Now is the time for Arkansas to stop them and utilize the timeouts to try to get that football back. First down and 20. Auburn from their 27. Washington will throw, crossing pattern incomplete. It was to Brent Fullwood, a little frustrated after he couldn't handle the ball. He pushed that Arkansas defender out of the way. Incidentally, an interesting phase of this first half, Lynn, is Auburn secondary is supposed to be weak against the pass. They've intercepted three passes, although a couple of them weren't well thrown. But they have, for the most part, stopped Arkansas's passing game, especially their all-conference receiver, James Sheba. Well, the reason they've been able to do that is because they've been putting terrific pressure on that quarterback. You may recall the one interception, the quarterback was hit just as he was throwing the football. Another time, and the interception that was run back for a touchdown by Porter, the quarterback was falling backwards throwing the ball. Arkansas has hit five out of 16 passes. Washington's down, and that is a... No, no good. good. That's no good to uh, Clayton Buford, the senior. There was an area down there that looked like that he had a spot if the ball had been thrown properly. Would have been a reception. And here it is. They've got a slot to the right side. They're coming down. He's just going to go right through the seam. Now the ball is thrown. You can see it bounces. Makes it uh, catch on the first bounce, which is good in baseball, but not in football. Well, Pat Washington will line him up with a third down and 20. Auburn ahead 14 to 3. 29 seconds remaining in the first half. I think we saw in that last pattern there had uh, Buford stopped down there. 
There was an open area. He had been wide open. Well, they've got Wigan in there. They've got Buford in there, speedsters. And so they go for the draw. He's a 30 up to the 36 yard line is Tommy A.G. And now Arkansas sure, calls time. Sure, yes. Arkansas wants to stop the clock. Mark Lee made that last hit. 24 seconds remaining. They do have time depending on the type of field position that they get. Or they may even choose to go after the punter. Arkansas will have two timeouts remaining. And uh, one score in this second quarter. Auburn. I think, Kurt, when we were talking to Frank Royals, the athletic director here, one of the reasons that uh, he was so impressed with Ken Hatfield was that when uh, there was less than a minute to go in a football game when he was coaching, they took it 90 yards for 89 yards for a score. He said that was very, very impressive. So Arkansas is the type of team that really believes that even though there's 24 seconds remaining, which is not a great deal of time, they can still get it into the end zone. Well, they scored uh, two touchdowns in the fourth quarter against Texas, nearly pulled that out. They got three touchdowns in the fourth quarter against SMU. They lost that game by three points. Texas is the game talking to the players and I think the coaching staff. They felt that was the, the game that really made believers out of this team that they could win. It was rushed hard. Out of Valley gets a bounce on it and it's going out of bounds on or stopping now on the 38 yard line of Arkansas with 13 seconds to go. Brad Taylor will come on. Maybe a couple of plays. A couple of plays. He's got a strong arm. You can go down and throw in the middle down there. If you get somebody in the middle like she best for you know a 25 yard gain and stop that clock. You can get a couple of plays off and there is a potential of getting into the area where you can at least come away with some points. I Not easy. I never saw an ex quarterback. that didn't believe anything 10 15 20 30 seconds was an hour. Hey, we got a lot of time. We right. got an hour to go here. The great legendary Bobby Lane says, I never lost a game. I just ran out of time. Yeah. Brad Taylor fading. Now he's setting a screen up, and it's no good. He's trying to get it over there to Bobby Joe Edmonds, number 41, with eight seconds to play. Quarterback you know, really put a big rush on him. Oh, he re quarterback really got level as he got rid of that football, and that might have been one of the reasons or the reasons that he threw it too high because he was really getting a lot of pressure. They got time for one more play. I'd probably unload it, throw that thing as far as you can, and hope that some sort of miracle can, can, can happen for you offensively. Arkansas has held Auburn's powerful rushing attack for just 57 yards, by the way, in the first half. They just made mistakes throwing them all in the Auburn defenders. Huh? They'll run it. This will wind up the half to three, two, no timeout taken, and the half is over. Jerry Thomas running the ball. Ben McCurdy made the tackle. The 26th annual Liberty Bowl game at halftime finds Auburn 14 and Arkansas 3. If you're with us at the start of the game, you remember Arkansas won the toss, then deferred their option until the beginning of the second half. Now they've chosen to receive. And Auburn will kick off. Robert McGinney will be kicking to Carl Miller, who's deep, but the, goes down the middle. Sammy Van Dyke or Mark Salgani. And the ball is to uh, Sammy Van Dyke. Comes up to the 15, to the 20, 25, to the 26 yard line. Arkansas, which had miserable field uh, position most of the second quarter, never threatened. And let's see if they can get it going. Kevin Green went down to make that tackle. That's twice he's tackled on the kickoff. There they are. You can see this has been a defensive battle. Look at the yards rushing. Yards passing about even. Ten yards in favor of Auburn. Three turnovers, the key of the game. Auburn intercepted three Arkansas passes. Arkansas, three minutes left in possession. The flag is down. Offensive tackle move for Arkansas. You know, Arkansas in that first, first half really did a good job defensively. As a matter of fact, Bo Jackson... Eight attempts for eight yards, and as long as it was three yards, so they really contained him. In that second period, when Auburn had great field position, they only averaged 1.4 yards per play. So Arkansas's defense really did a good job. Ball stop. Offense. First down. Not a good way to start the second half. 
First down, 15, Arkansas on their 21. Penalties in the first half. Auburn penalized four times for 30. Arkansas three times for 25 yards. Marshall Foreman has been the leading ball carrier. Brad Taylor throws it out on a hit pattern to the 20. He's contained. Bobby Lee Edmonds are trying to get him out there in the open. Let him go to work one on one. But Kevin Green had the ball. Look at the last five possessions oh, yeah. where Arkansas started. Terrible. Inside their 30 yard line every time. Yeah, it's terrible. When you've got to march 80 yards to score, particularly, you know, when you have the flex bone or witch bone type of an offense, and you're, you want to grind it out four and five yards at a time, it's really difficult because somewhere along the way, generally you make a mistake. They made a mistake on the very first play when somebody jumped off sides and put them in a first and 15 situation as opposed to first and 10. Second down, 15. She best and looters are two wide receivers. Brad Taylor goes down the middle. It is nearly intercepted again. And you look into the crowd. She best smothered by three defenders. Two offensive receivers in the same area. That is not what you want to happen. What you want to do, you want to spread those defenders out. So one man could actually have covered both of those receivers on that particular play. The quarterback also is throwing that ball into traffic. They should have learned in the first half not to do that because that pass very easily could have been intercepted by Auburn. They're making Auburn's defensive backs job a lot easier when they don't spread them out. Make them cover more area back there in that secondary. Matt Caesar nearly picked that one off to free safety. Third down and 15 for the Razorbacks. And they're 21. This is a rollout pattern. And it is hot at the 38-yard line. James Chivest. That's typical of the catches he made this year where he caught 51 for an 18-yard average. Boy, they did a great job. It was man-to-man -man coverage. You're going to see him make, he's going to take his man deep. Man-to-man -man coverage. Now he's got him turned, got him ready. Now he breaks to the outside, and the ball is thrown low, which is good because meaning that Shebest is the only one that could come up with a ball, and you mentioned he catches everything that gets in his area. Anything he's capable of catching, he does. Does a terrific job. He's from Houston. He's only a sophomore. He's caught three in this game for 52 yards. On first down, Taylor guns it to Bobby Joe Edmonds at the 40. Edmonds is dropped at the 42-yard line. Again, they're trying to open this thing up. That's their scat back, Edmonds. Let him go to work if they can. But John Daly contained him. What they're going to do now, he's throwing that ball out to the side there. They didn't make much on that play, but Four. what it's going to do is get that linebacker out there. He's going to stretch that defense. That's going to allow Shebest to go down and run the curl or the inside move, and he's going to be open. Brad Taylor passing in the first half. He had a four out of 11. Way below a seasonal percent for him. A little bit different look now out of the wishbone. Second down six. First man through. Comes over to 50. 45. That's Marshall Foreman. He's been the leading ball carrier in the game. He had 23 yards in the first half. And he's dropped by Jonathan Robinson in the Auburn secondary. There it is. The first option. There it is. He gives him the football. Good block on Carr, knocking him out of the way. And now the speedster, five foot nine and about 190 pounds coming up the field. And here it is. See him the block. Look at the aggressiveness of that offensive line of Arkansas blowing out and getting some movement. Now in the first half, Auburn was getting great penetration, but not on that play. Marshall Foreman again, not much. This is the first time that Arkansas has been in Auburn territory since early in the first period. They didn't. You notice they came out throwing. the 50-yard line in the second quarter. They came out throwing. Generally, if a wishbone or a flexbone offense comes out and they try to establish the run to, to throw the football. Well, they found out in the first half they weren't going to get that job done. So now in the second half, they came out throwing the football, trying to spread that defense out, get the linebackers thinking, moving out into pass patterns so the running game could go. They're second down nine, just short of the Auburn 43. Taylor on a sprint out, sets, throws to the sideline, and it's a diving catch at the 36 by James Shebest again. Well, he made us two great catches. Well, he's not supposed to be very fast. All he does is catch That's the ball it. and get open. Here it is now. He's coming down. He looked at him first. Now he's trying to get the man moving deep. Comes to the outside. And the good thing that he did, Kurt, he came back for the football. He didn't stand there and wait for the ball. He came back after it. If he had waited for the ball, the defensive man could have broken it up. They have a third down and two to go. Shebest is coming out. 
Well, this is a running situation, I'm sure, for Arkansas. They want to pick up this first down. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't make it on this play. They go for it on fourth down. Jamie Luters went in for him. Third and two. And they stopped Brad Taylor at the 40-yard line. A tremendous charge by Ben Thomas, the right tackle of Auburn. It's a loss of four. They have ben a fourth Thomas, and six. The leading tackler for Auburn this year is 91 Thomas and you look at the penetration now, I just mentioned before they didn't get any penetration the offensive line of Arkansas blew them back that time Thomas was in the backfield went right after the quarterback he didn't have any intentions whatsoever worrying about that fullback that was somebody else's responsibility his responsibility was to get penetration and go for the quarterback he looks like Barkley the ex basketball player from Auburn it forced him into a punting situation now I'm sure that if they it made a yard. They would really consider, uh, seriously consider going foot on fourth down. But when you lose three or four, now putting him into a fourth and five situation, they're going to have to punt. Greg Horn averaged 37.3 in the first half. And I have a timeout and a penalty. Oh, they, they want to penalize him. They ran it out. He wants to back it up five yards and have a better chance to hang it up around the goal line and maybe to kick it out of bounds down there in the coffin corner. Well, I'm looking at the 25-second clock. It's now down to zero. Now they just penalized it. Puts it on the 44. Fourth down and 10 now. Greg Horn to punt it. Craig Gaines is the safety man. And he hoists it up there. It's a good kick, fair catch. Gaines has it. He goes over his head and it's cut down there. That was a terrific play by that team because yeah. you notice the fair catch Satan was made, fair but they went back by there. the goal line, so when that ball bounced, they'd be very to very the He was waving his arm, pretending like he caught the ball, he got fooled himself. 41-yard punt. So the score with a timeout is still Auburn 14 and Arkansas 3. Hi, I'm Kevin White, cornerback, Arkansas Razorbacks. I hope you're enjoying the holidays, and on behalf of the Arkansas Razorbacks, I'd like to wish you a very happy new year. Kevin Wyatt from Kansas City, Missouri, a junior. Remember his father? John Wyatt, the pitcher? Yeah, he yeah. pitched Major League Ball. Yeah. Good boy, huh? Yes. Three-yard line, Auburn. Arkansas. Arkansas is going to have about eight men up near that line of scrimmage. They know they're going to have to run. Look at that, Nick. Auburn jumped offside. Flag down. That will be a legal procedure. Looked like Reggie Ware, the fullback, 36. They also had an offensive lineman that moved before the snap. I would look for uh, Arkansas to have at least eight men up near that line of scrimmage because they're looking for Auburn to, to run with the football and try to get it out of that, that terrible field position. David Dudley's gone in as a rover back. That is, they can play anywhere he wants. For Nathan Jones for Arkansas. Now it's first down, 11 and a half yards. They were penalized half the distance to the goal. Auburn has not committed a turnover tonight, and Arkansas wants to make them come up with their first one. That's the same play. Nearly got tackled for a safety. He escaped three men and brought it out. They should have had him in the end zone. Oh, my goodness. And then they should have had him on the one-yard line. Kevin Anderson made the stop. That was a big run by Brent Fulwood. That was a terrific play. Now, he, the penetration was there. They had about eight men up and near that line of scrimmage, knowing they're going to have to run. He pitches the ball out. Forget about the option. Now, here's the penetration right there. Tackle is missed. Right. Right there. It was about Four one yard deep in, the in, in it was Lasker, the free safety, that missed the tackle in the end zone. It would have been two points. They have a second down and four. Coming through to the 20. Still rolling. On the AG, the fullback. And Auburn quickly gets away from their yard and a half line and gets out of serious trouble. What a difference one, one play will make, one tackle would make in this football game. Because here it was, they could have had him in the end zone for a two-point play. And now they're, they're all the way out of danger right now, getting into good field position. That was a good run by Tommy Agee. I thought it was really a good play on the part of uh, Ken Hatfield on that, that punting situation because it really put... Auburn in terrible field position, but they got out of it. Tommy Agee, you don't hear a lot about him, but he's a very dependable performer. 
He had a big game against Florida last year. There's forward. Forward. Matt Dindu. At the 30, he fell forward to his 31. He was hit by Kevin Anderson, the cornerback. Here's Auburn's last five possessions. On their 21, on Arkansas's 45, on Arkansas's 13, on Auburn's own 42, and on their own 37. But they just took over on their own three to make it their sixth possession. You know one thing about the, the wishbone type of offense, and I haven't seen any fumbles out there today, and that's kind of unusual because the exchange between that quarterback and the fullback is a difficult one. I'll get into that in a second. There's Jackson. Jackson tries to turn up field, is knocked down at the 39 of Auburn. He's hit there by Nathan Jones, who's back in his rover. I was talking about the, the, the fullback and the quarterback exchange. You look at the attendance here at the 84 Liberty Bowl, 50,180, and you can see by your picture that all the seats are taking. The quarterback has to put the ball in the stomach of the fullback. He can't grab that ball because he doesn't know where he's going to get it or not. And it really is a split second decision type of situation that quarterback has. And oftentimes that's why there are fumbles. And I know that's the toughest thing for a quarterback to do, to put it in there. And the fullback doesn't know where he's going to get the ball or not. And there just becomes a certain point where the fullback has to grab the football. All right, uh, Washington is injured. He's going out. And a freshman, Jeff Berger, is coming on. All right, we have a timeout here. 9.08 to go in the third quarter. There's a pause in the action. We'll be right back. This is the Cat Sports Network. Berger this year has passed eight times out of 13. Complete. He's got eight out of 13, 95 yards. He's a freshman from Cedartown, Georgia. Pat Dye is high on him for the future. This could be their starting quarterback in a couple of years. First down, Auburn on their 39. They crack forward for two yards. And that hit is made on Nick Miller on Reggie Ware. Reggie Ware, that was not an option type of a situation. They just wanted that quarterback to get his feet wet out there. And here we're taking a look at uh, Pat Washington, the quarterback, starting quarterback for Auburn, getting, getting worked on on the sideline. Hope to have a report for you on his condition just a little bit later. Second down, eight. Auburn ahead, 14 to three. Now they pitch wide, stumbling and going down. Bo Jackson, and he's hit there by Raven Caldwell. That was an interesting option. He also had the option to throw the football. He was looking downfield to his split end, and he was open. He was going to throw him the football, and the last option was to Bo Jackson. We got a report on Pat Washington, quarterback for Auburn, that he has a, a five bruise. He may be able to walk it off and uh, may be able to come back in the football game, but it is not anything that is serious. Bo Jackson's longest gain tonight has been seven yards. He's really been stifled by this quick Arkansas defense. Well, you take a look at the linebackers. They're following him wherever he goes. Third down and seven. The pass deflected by Nick Miller, the linebacker, number 47. And Auburn, who'd marched the ball with a lot of guts on their own yard and a half line right out to their 42. Good play by Stop. Miller. Here it is. If he gets the ball over that that linebacker's uh, hands, it's going to be complete. You can see that man is wide open. Miller made a good, good uh, batted it down. Next thing he's got to do is catch the football and go the other way. Bunch formation, Lewis Colbert. Bobby Joe Edmonds is the safety man. They're going after him. They got him. Flag is down. They hit him. They hit him. A flag down. You may have running into the kicker on this one. You got it. That's right. They were going after that. Tony Cherico, I believe, ran into him. They had right up the middle, too. They had somebody coming right after him. I guess it was Cherico that eventually hit him, but it looked like he might have a shot at blocking this punt. Oh, that's a costly penalty. Oh, it's, yes, it is, because you can't get into the kicker. You just got to get so far and then jump up in the air. As you can see it right now, there's he Cherico did jump up right in the air. 64. He, he tried to get there. You see, he tried to get away from him, but he couldn't. He knows what happened. You can nail him with a 15 yarder. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense. They're trying to make something happen, Kurt. That's what they went after the kicker there in that situation, hoping to get a block, turn something over, and something big happens for their football team to turn this game around. Well, Auburn.
Auburn was giving the ball up. Now they've got it back again after that costly penalty. And Jackson has hit at the 39 of Arkansas. Four-yard gain. He ran into Raven Caldwell. 7.24 to go in the third quarter. Auburn sitting on an 11-point lead. It's been somewhat of a defensive struggle. Auburn scored one of his touchdowns on an intercepted pass. They intercepted two others. They haven't had a turnover, and they have stopped Arkansas. They haven't really done anything since uh, Porter intercepted the ball and went in for the touchdown. Second down, six. Berger throws the ball out. It could be a lateral. No, it isn't. Incomplete. That's complete forward pass. I, nobody fell on that ball. I wouldn't have taken any chances. <laughs> Boy, that was very, that very happen. close. That's for sure. That would look very close to being a lateral. Third down and six. Take a look at it. All right, take a look. He's faking the fullback. A.G. coming in here. He's going out. You can't see from that angle. But it was very close to being a lateral. Maybe he thought, well, I can't go back and get it anyway, so I'll just walk away. But there was the official standing right on the side that you can see. He's on the about the 40, 39-yard line. He was there and made the, made the call right away. Trey Gaines is in as a wide receiver, replacing Freddie Wagan. Ricky Williams is in. Here's Berger, the quarterback. They hit him, and he's back to the 39, and that's all. Rodney Beecham reached him, wrapped him up, let him slither away, but his momentum was shot. And he just got back to the line of scrimmage, and Auburn has a fourth and six. I get the feeling watching, you know, Arkansas there. That defense really is doing a terrific job, even with all the problems that they've had. Three interceptions, roughing the kicker, giving him the continuation of the football, but they have stopped Auburn's offense. They ever get anything clicking, they come up with a big play to turn this football game around. Well, Auburn led the Southeast Conference in rushing this year and total offense. He's got a great running game. This kick is headed to the end zone and bounces through. The touchback, Arkansas has a first down on their 20. We have six minutes and nine seconds remaining in the third quarter. It's still Auburn 14 and Arkansas 3. Well, that's fine. I'll tell you one thing. Pat Dye will never get that Alabama game out of his mind. Boy, he's still talking about it. He won't forget that one. There's a screen pass. Bobby Joe Edmond, they're over there, and they grab him at the 24, a four-yard gain. He is the, the best scat back on the team, the chance for a big play. And they've, they've tried to hitch the ball to him, screen it to him, but Auburn's been very alert over there. They Lenny stopped Lenny. him so far, but this, this is a situation like Bo Jackson. Get that ball often to somebody. He's, somebody has to make an open field tackle. Now, they've been able to do it so far on Edmonds, but, you know, it only takes one. You miss that tackle, and there he goes up the field. And he had the screen pass, a couple of blockers in front of him that last time. Marcus Elliott is out. All Southwest Conference right guard. Wells has replaced him. Marshall Foreman rolling up the middle. He's been the best ball carrier in this game. Well, he pulled back a sophomore from Houston, Texas, third leading High school ball carrier. Here it is, straight ahead. Here. Good blocking up front. He breaks the tackle. Carr had him, but he broke the tackle. He's 5'9", about 190 pounds, but he is a strong runner. Here it is. You take a look at Thomas, 91. He's veering down, but he is blocked by the offensive tackle, right tackle, David McGee, number 71. He just let him go to the inside and just carried him on in there. Quick signal time. Taylor on the roll. Throws on the run and threw it away. He knew that uh, he couldn't deliver that ball to anyone. No, they were threw it away. Split in. It was Shebes was down there. There were three defensive men around him. That was a wise decision. In the first half, the quarterbacks for Arkansas made some really poor decisions trying to throw the ball and force it in. That time he saw three defensive men around his receiver throw the ball out of the bounds, come back and try to pick it up on the next down. You know, Arkansas defensively had one of the lowest scoring Averages against them in the country, 12 and a half points. Auburn gave up 19 and a half points a game this year. Here's a draw play. It doesn't get much. They get up to the 35. That's Foreman, stopped by Nate Hill, and that's it. Now they have a third and five. And yards per game, uh, Arkansas only allowed 121 yards rushing a game against them. 
Houston got 56 yards on the ground against them, and they're playing in the Cotton Bowl. Four Southwest Conference opponents fail to score a touchdown against Well, them. when you take a look at him, you say, wait a minute, these guys aren't very big. You got a linebacker who weighs 211 pounds. He's one of the leading tacklers. Nose guard weighs 230. We ought to be able to run right at them. But they can't. Another interception. That's Dick Beasley. Four interceptions by Auburn's defense. And they thought that would be the weak spot. Arkansas could throw against that defense. When that ball bounces up in the air, there's generally a defensive man around. You can see here, it bounces off the receiver. It's up in the air, and here comes the Auburn man. He's playing center field. Vic Beasley, number 31, very alert coming up with that interception. Now, he's playing center field, and his job was don't get let anybody get behind you. Keep everything in front. The fourth interception of I'll the day. Tell you, it's, it's a wonder Arkansas is not way out of this thing. Auburn hasn't committed a turnover. Arkansas has four turnovers. Our, uh, Auburn had two chances. Uh, they had the ball first down on the Arkansas 14-yard line in the second quarter. Failed to score out of it. Auburn's had terrific field position with, that, with the exception of uh, the punting situation. They were backed up on their one-yard line. They got out of that jam, but they've had really good field position compared to Arkansas. Right now they have a second down eight. Oh, it! They're on the 45-yard line of Arkansas in the lead, 14 to three. They're gonna throw Washington back in the game. Now he escapes, look at him get out of there and it's knocked him down on the 43. Tony Cherico, Johnny Mission, Kansas. They might have had him five yards deeper behind the line of scrimmage. Well, he's a good athlete, Pat Washington. It's good to see these back in the ball game, but the injury he sustained earlier was not a serious one. Looking at Arkansas, what they're doing good on first down, they're, they're gearing their defense to stop the run because that is what Auburn has been doing. Auburn, what they need to do, instead of always running the football on first down, come up and throw with it because the last time on first down, they flitched. Now, you look at the situation now, you look at doubling up both wide receivers with defensive backs. They're going to rush three, but three, maybe four at the most. Third down, six. Washington pass, blocked, deflected by Calvin Williams, who just went in at left tackle. There he is, number 13 from Greenville, Texas. Fourth and six. Again, Auburn presented with an opportunity and failed to cash in on it. What they need to do, as I just mentioned, see, they're getting very predictable on first down, and they're running the football all the time. So what, you know, what Arkansas is doing, they're putting nine men up on the line of scrimmage and stopping the run, forcing them to throw on second and third down. 2.44 to go in the third quarter. Remember, the fourth period has been Arkansas's best period. They have really nailed their opponents in the fourth quarter. Let's see if they can do it tonight. A fair catch call on the 11-yard line by Bobby Joe Edmond. The Razorbacks again have the ball in poor field position. 32-yard punt. It was 14 to three at halftime. It is still 14 to three. Auburn in the lead in a timeout. First down, Razorbacks on their 11-yard line. Derek Thomas coming right up the middle. That's the one play that's gained some yardage. That got 13 for him. Foreman's been the leading ball carrier at fullback. There's the second leading ball carrier on the season, Thomas, and he splits the time with Foreman at fullback. That's the first option. The quick handoff to the fullback up the middle, and it's worked tonight for him. Arkansas has a first down. Well, they have Foreman who weighs 190 pounds, and they bring in Thomas who's about 215 or 220 pounds. And it's a different type of look for that defense. They're on their 23. This is a pass coming up. He pump fakes. He throws. He's got him there. He caught the ball. Theo Young. It'll be a first down Arkansas. Young catches the ball. He's a big man. And caught it over Alvin Briggs. Now that's the old stop and go type of pattern. Young is the tight end going down. And you're going to see the quarterback coming back. He's going to pump it. Bang. Now the the tight end takes off and he gets behind the defensive back. The defensive back had absolutely no idea where the football was thrown. Actually, had the ball been perfectly thrown he, and he caught it in stride, it would have been a foot race to the goal line. I said, what they need is a big play. Maybe that was the play. 
38 yard pass play first down Arkansas on the Auburn 44. There's a man coming through that's Derek Thomas. He spills over the 35 to the 33 of Auburn. He may have another first down. Nat Caesar tackled him in the secondary. Well, for a change, now the, the Arkansas fans have something to cheer about. They really haven't had much to cheer about offensively since the opening drive. But here they are now with 125 remaining in the third period, getting the best drive that they've had since the opening drive in the first quarter. Well, they mark him down, and they say he went down to 36. Second down, two. He's gone forward, but they bring the ball back a couple of yards. Ah, oh, you got an offensive lineman moving. Well, yeah, that's well, never they've made, the time they've made a lot of mistakes tonight. They've hurt themselves yes, more than they anything. Yes, they have. They're in a short yardage situation. Second down, when you got second down, third down, even fourth down to pick up a couple of yards. Somebody jumps off sides. Now they got to bring it back five more yards. They had Auburn contained, fourth down, Auburn punting. They roughed the kicker, gave him the ball back again. Now, with the second down and two, they're going to have a second down seven. Just, ball just ball. when they had some momentum ball going. Side. Second down, seven. Yarborough, Stitton are in. Erie, McGee are out. The two starting tackles are replaced. Second down, seven. There goes another flag down. And that's Derek Thomas in Paducah, Kentucky, hitting and stopped by Gerald Robinson, a second string defensive end. Another flag down. We're less than a minute to go in the third quarter. Oh, they gave it back. Gave it back to him. Gave it back. Now they're going to be in a, a situation. It's going second to be and two. second and two again. Now, it's a bad move on Arkansas's part, but it's the worst one there on Auburn's part because they really got a break with somebody jumping offside. Now, as I said before, Arkansas really has three shots to pick up the first down. Arkansas, you may see them get up on that line of scrimmage in a hurry and maybe go on a quick count because the uh, defensive unit for Auburn. Defense lined up in the neutral zone. Repeat the down. The defense for for Auburn has a uh, three men that will move depending on where the tight end goes. Sometimes you can catch them moving and pick up easy yardage. Second down, two for the Razorbacks on the Auburn 36. And that is Derek Thomas hitting forward. Boy, he can blast. Greg Carr had to tackle him in the secondary, the All-American linebacker. That's a first down for Arkansas. 54 is Carr, All-American linebacker. And you can see him, look at the offensive line just blowing out of there, doing a, a terrific job of moving them out of there. You know, it's not really a big secret as why things work and why they don't work. You know, number 56 is probably the, the best offensive lineman for Arkansas. That's Marcus Elliott. He's gone back in. First down, Razorback. Auburn's 29-yard line. A handoff again to Derek Thomas. We got a hot hand dealer. That's right. And they're giving him the ball. He was stopped by Arthur Johnson. Foreman has 48 yards. He's averaged 4.8 a carry. Thomas has 41 or 42 yards. And their time has run out as the horn blasts here. The end of the third quarter in the 26th annual Liberty Bowl game in Memphis, Tennessee. There's the score. It was that same score at halftime. And Arkansas now has its first serious threat of the second half. We'll see how they do. And we'll be back 14 to three Auburn. This is Kurt Gowdy, Len Dawson. will begin the fourth quarter of the Liberty Bowl game. 14 to 3 Auburn. We're in Memphis, Tennessee. 60 degree temperature here on this December night. And it's second down eight, Arkansas on the Auburn 27. This is Arkansas's deepest penetration since the first quarter. Taylor Strandling. Well, they're going to get a loss on that one. Bobby Joe Edmonds is banged by John Daly. They, they just got all messed up. And, they did not have any offensive no. linemen out there to protect him because generally what that is, that was a screen, and he was rolling, faking to the left, hoping to get the flow going that way, then turn around and throw it back to his back. But one of the offensive linemen forgot to get out and involved in the screen because after he made the catch, if somebody was out there to make that block, he would have made good yardage.
Keep Pat Dye, head coach of Auburn, on the sideline. James Chibist has come in. Chibist is in there. Third down now and 13 for Arkansas. Blitz is on. And he'll have to throw for his life. And it's out of bounds. No good. It'll be a fourth. They're trying to get the ball to Chibist. Number 25. Quarterback did a good job of just getting rid of that football and preventing a big loss, at least giving the opportunity for the field goal kicker to come in if they so desire. And after three quarters, taking a look at some of the statistics, not what you would call an offensive day for either side. Look at that. Arkansas has outgained them. 248 to 189. Very close in rushing, and the passing game has been in favor of Arkansas, except Arkansas has thrown four interceptions. They've given that ball up four times. And Auburn has not committed one turnover in this game. That's been the big difference. That has been the football game. Two wide receivers in. They're going for it. They're on the 32-yard line of Auburn. The fourth down and 13. Here comes a blitz. He throws the ball. It is no good. I tell you, they've had great pressure on Taylor. Oh, they did. They had no time. It's a hurry-up time all the time for him. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Two in a row. Him. He's had to. Curry ran for his life the last time. Threw the ball out, out of bounds. And this time they had three defensive backs or three de defensive linemen on him. Now I don't care what kind of blocking you got. There's no reason that three of them should be back there. You're not outmanned that many. First down, Auburn on their 32-yard line. We have a timeout call down in the field. 14 minutes and 8 seconds to play in the game. 14 to 3 Auburn. All right, we're ready to go. Auburn ball. They're on their own 32 yard line. A first down. A little over 14 minutes to play. There's Jackson. Jackson's brought down on the 39 yard line by David Basil. That's just a Paul power. Jackson. Yeah. Power to the left. Stifled tonight. Let's see what he's got here. He's carried the ball 12 times for only 27 yards. That'll be one of his lowest efforts of all time in the Auburn backfield. Now they're just keying on him. Wherever he goes, that's where those linebackers are heading. They know that if they're going to stop Auburn, they're going to have to stop Bo Jackson, and they've been doing it today. Last year, it was 10 above. A bitter win made it a windshield factor of 10 below zero, B.C. against Notre Dame. A lot better this year, and that's a loss. That play was slow unfolding. He made a complete pivot. You think that was what he the tried design? to do? Is get the linebackers committed to go one way, then turn around and go down the line of scrimmage and get the option. But what Arkansas is doing right now, they're going after him. They are playing run right now. At least they do on first and second down situations. Here it is. Arkansas uh, is always in terrible field position here. Auburn has terrific field position, but they're running the ball all the time on first down. That guy talking to one of his toys. What's the matter there? Can't you open this thing up? Third down and four. Look out. Nearly offside. Here's the quarterback keeper. A fumble. The ball's bouncing around. It's back to the 10. It's maybe recovered by Arkansas. They had a shot at it. Nathan Jones recovered it. They died for that ball. Auburn should have had the ball at their 10-yard line. And there's Nathan Jones recovering. And the big break that Arkansas has been looking for. There it is. They're looking for that big play. And that time they got it. The blitz was on. You can take a look at the linebackers are up there. They're getting great penetration. The ball is pitched out there. It should have been handled. And it was kicked after now watch the was hit. Well, the first guy is Washington. the quarterback has an opportunity. He really should have slowed down a lot more when he's getting ready. To, he should have really slowed down first things first to make that uh, fumble recovery. He did not do it, but there it is. Arkansas on the ball. They're on the move. Six-yard line. Six yards to go for a score. First and goal to go. 32 yards lost in that play. And they send Marshall Foreman hurtling into the line, and he only goes to the four and a half. Foreman... Little fellow, 5'9", 190, Houston, Texas. He's a sophomore. What a guy. He's, uh, he's, he's hot. Well, he's talking to his offensive Look at him. I mean, he's hot about something in their game. I mean, what's going on? He keeps pointing out there and tell me about it. What's the matter with my guy? Well, he doesn't probably want to take those kind of chances. He just turned around and pitched the ball because Arkansas has been blitzing practically on every play. Second down and five. 
And they send Foreman again. There he looks he like to the two-yard line where he ran into Ben McCurdy first. Marshall I think they're going to go four times. I think if they don't score now, they'll undoubtedly go on fourth down. They're down by 11 points. They need a touchdown. 14 to 3 Auburn. Remember, Arkansas has been a tremendous fourth quarter team this year. They scored 86 points in the fourth quarter to 20 for their opponents. And they have obviously have been a superb condition team. Oh, they really are. I look, I look for Auburn really to shut off the fullback here. There he is. He's in. Marshall Foreman scores. Two-yard touchdown. And Arkansas is back in it. Long struggle for him. It really was. And they really had penetration. It looked like they had him stopped for maybe a yard loss with that great second effort by Foreman. Got him in. Now, here you can take a look at it. There, they're going to get their hands on him right there. They've got him, but he cuts back against the grain. You can see that the linebacker's car did overrun the play. Foreman gets in for the touchdown. 14 to 9. They'll go for two points They'll right go now. Go for two. That means they'd be in a because they get this game with a field goal. They get this. Yes. They need a touchdown anyway if they got the extra points. Field goal wouldn't do him any good. They're going to throw maybe if he does and cork it. No good. He uh, had Sheba's pinned right up against the back well, he, of the end zone. The only guy he had out. I don't understand yeah. that. The only receiver that he had was Sheba. If he wasn't open, then he's going to have to throw it away. So there's a pause of the action before the kickoff here at the Liberty Bowl. We'll be right back. This is the Cat Sports Network. Who said? 11.56 remaining a long time. This has been a dogged defensive duel. And now maybe it'll break open here. Arkansas just taking advantage of a recovered fumble and scored. Buford's the middleman now on the return team. Greg Horn will kick off. And the ball bounding around. Caught by the short man on the eight-yard line. That's Kyle Collins. Collins is buried. And now Arkansas is around. Yes, they the are. Razorbacks are <laughs> snorting. They were terrific coverage. They were really flying down the field on that one. They've done a terrific job defensively. Arkansas has because we mentioned earlier Auburn really has a, had a lot of opportunities. Four interceptions for one, one thing. They've had the ball. Arkansas has committed four turnovers, all interceptions. Auburn just committed their first and it cost them a touchdown as they threw the ball away on an option play. First down on their 17-yard line. Washington, Jackson, he's piled up. They'll get it. He's hit there by Rodney Beecham and Raven Caldwell. Kurt, you remember the, when that fumble, it was the option where it was a pitch out and you saw the coach hit. Uh, Pat Dye was really jumping up and down on the sidelines. I think maybe he was saying, hey, let's not take a chance like that. Let's get to a safe type of handoff. That type, that last play was that type of play, a very safe handoff. Arkansas has been reading run all the way in the second half. Now well, maybe Auburn will open up with a pass. They got to do it on first down, though. They can't wait until they get into a second long. Well, they got first. Jackson on the wing right now. They may throw the ball to him. They are. They're going to throw. And he's hit. And they stack him on the 16-yard line. Eric Witten from Dallas, Texas, number 39, got into him. They had the men coming because as I looked down in the secondary, he was all man-to-man -man coverage. They had three receivers out, and, up, and, and Arkansas had three men all over him. Here it is. He's coming back in the pocket. You can see that... Uh, There's Witten right there. He got knocked down. He got up with that great extra effort and got back and made the sack. Third down and 11 for Auburn on their 16. Now I look, generally in a, a situation like this, they double up, and here they are. They're going to double up the wide receivers and only rush three or four men. Jackson's again on the wing, and they throw the ball, and it's no good, and they'll have to punt. Auburn, Jackson's down. He's helped up there by Brazel. What is happening first and second down? Arkansas is going after them because what they've done, they've shown that they're going to run the football on first and second down. Now, in a third and long situation, they double up the wide receivers. 
forcing the quarterback to throw to the back coming out of the backfield for a short type of pass. I know at halftime, Pat Dye warned his team, all you got to do is read statistics and look at those 86 points to 20 that Arkansas hammered their opponents in the fourth third and warned his team, guys, this isn't over yet. These guys score in the fourth quarter. You better not let up. The kick is away. It's a high boot. Edmonds has a fair catch on his 46. And Arkansas will go to work now. Good field position. Good field position, which is something that is new for Arkansas in this football game. The time now, 10-14 to play. And the score, Auburn 14, Arkansas 9. First down, Arkansas on their 46-yard line. They have just scored. They stopped Auburn Cole. And now here's Arkansas back on the attack. And that's the fullback, Marshall Foreman. First man through, goes to the 50, ran into Alan Dutchock. Second string right tackle playing behind Ben Thomas for Auburn. Defensively, if you don't pinch down with that defensive tackle, then that fullback is going to gain some yardage because they're going straight at them. If you can get an offensive lineman into the face of a linebacker who weighs about 100 or 215 pounds, you are going to make some yardage. And that's what uh, Arkansas has been able to do. Carl Miller just came in, number 30. Second down six for Arkansas at the 50-yard line. Spinning away and stopped at the 46. Is Foreman again. Well, he's a hard little runner. Uh, he is running hard. He's made great second effort to pick up yardage. He was actually hit near the line of scrimmage, and he picked up about three or four yards. Well, they're at the Auburn 46. They have a third down and a yard to go. Marshall Foreman is the leading ball carrier in the game. He's outgained the great Bo Jackson tonight. 62 yards for Foreman and 50, 15 carries. What's Jackson got? We'll look him up. Jackson has 27 yards and 13 carries. Two yards of carry. Taylor runs it out and is stopping. Well, I don't know about that call. Mm. They slide the quarterback down on the keeper. And uh, he was just delaying time there to get hit along got, the line of scrimmage. He got, got straight ahead, quick, quick. Nine men up on near the line. Look at all those people up there defensively. You got about nine people up on the line of scrimmage. You might have forget about the option because everybody is covered. The best way to do uh, in a situation like that is straight ahead. That was Harold Holman, the nose guard, that stopped him. Arkansas has called a timeout. 8.31 to go in the game. It's still 14-9 in favor of Auburn. Sodium can turn up where you least expect it, even in your antacid tablet. Looking for an antacid without sodium? Tums is sodium-free, and it also neutralizes one-third more stomach acid than the other leading brands. Tums lets you do without the heartburn and without all that sodium. And for liquid strength in a tablet, Tums EX. This is the time of year when we gather from far and near and we welcome the season in and let all the love begin. And the jokes you tell and the songs you sing and the sight of your smile still means everything. I finally get to say I think of you every day I'm on my Happy holidays From Coors to you From the people at Coors 8.31 to go Auburn ahead 14-9 Auburn has made 23 yards in this half Arkansas has made 123 yards Auburn has not crossed the 50-yard line their offense has been completely shut down. Well, they're very predictable, Kurt. I mean, the first down situations are always running the football. Now, here's a very important play. The best, most important ten half for the Arkansas coach. This is fourth down and a yard to go. He's going to throw the ball deep. He dropped it. He had it in his hands. Bobby Joe Edmonds had it in his hands and dropped it. Ooh, ooh. It was it. Red Barber used to say, oh, doctor. Oh, boy, he'd like to have that back. This is really a fine throw. Faking it to Foreman up the middle, coming back. Good protection. Fires that ball. Look at that, wide open. 
Hits him right on the head. Touchdown. Fitz. You know, that was a great call, though, fourth of the yard. They caught everybody up. You see that. Yeah, they had nine men on the line of scrimmage. They had a touchdown right in their hand. Bobby Joe Edmonds, he's the saddest guy in the ball game. Mm. First down Auburn on their 45. Washington hands off. And that is Paulus Campbell. We haven't seen too much of him tonight. He's hit by Kevin Anderson. Well, all the uh, the substituting that was going to happen today really didn't happen. I knew that when they get into the second half, it would win the football game. That's the name of the game, really. I know that the Pat Dye, as you're looking at him on the sidelines, did want to play some people in the first half, and he did play some. But I knew that in the second half, when it gets down on the line, he's going for the win. Second down and a yard. There's a first down as Reggie Ware hits straight ahead. This is the first time in the second half that Auburn has been in Arkansas territory. Arkansas. And really, the reason magnificent on defense. Yeah, the reason they're there is because Arkansas went for the for the first down in the fourth down situation. But they had to. 7:30 remaining in this football game. Defensively, for uh, the Razorbacks, what they've got to do is they've got to tackle that football. Block moving all along. They're down well, they to six seconds. Yeah. Five. They better hurry up and get a quick count. Three, two. They just beat it. That's Jackson. Jackson tumbled down at the 43 yard line of Arkansas by Rodney Beecham and Mark Lee. They have been on him like glue yeah. this evening. They've done a terrific job on, on Bo Jackson. He only gained eight yards on eight carries in the first half. So he's hovering around 30 yards for the entire football game. And what uh, Auburn's doing a good job though there uh, if they get the playoff it's down to 14 13 seconds on the 25 second clock they'll come up to the line of scrimmage. the quarterback will look at that clock he's looking straight ahead he'll get it off with a couple of seconds to go. Just beat it again. On the option, Reggie Ware, the fullback, first through 36. And he has the ball. They're stopped at the 40 yard line, maybe the 39. Put it on the Arkansas 39. It's third down. I talk seven. about third or seven. First, first down situations. Auburn has run the ball 20 out of 23 times, average 2.9 yards a carry. That is why Arkansas has nine men up near the line of scrimmage on first down because Auburn has indicated that's what they're going to do. Well, they're using this clock perfectly. They're down out of three seconds. They get it off again just in time. There's a pitch. He's Jackson got it. breaks yeah. it. He's gone. Bo Jackson is gone for the score. Bo Jackson finally broke it. They contained him all night with a back like that. Yeah, hammer him, hammer him, hammer him, and then bang, he can do it. Don't ever let play. him get turned upfield. Don't let him turn that corner and get turned upfield because you are going to lose that, that foot race. Number 34, Bo Jackson. Contained him all day, and here it is. He gets to the outside. The block is there. A tackle is missed. You can't grab him with your arm or hand and expect to bring him down, but he's got that tremendous speed into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, he scored two touchdowns tonight. His figures will look decent now after that 39 yard run. Chris Knapp is going to try the point. And the score now is 20 to 9. One play may have been this ball game, a, but looked like a touchdown pass dropped by Bobby Joe Edmonds out in the open on fourth and one. A gutty call by Arkansas. All right, we'll be back. It's Auburn 21 and Arkansas 9. Day. Bo Jackson, the speed of a hundred meter man, he's a fine sprint track and field athlete. You could hold him and hold him. He was having probably his poorest game ever in an Auburn uniform, averaging 2.2 yards a carry. And bango, he goes 39 and breaks it open. So that's why they look for a man like that. One or two plays when they do it. And the opposing coaches know it. Jackson is one of those hold your breath athletes. He makes the opponents hold their breath. Well, he's very physical. He, too. Now, he takes a pounding, Kurt, and he's he's capable of taking that pounding. And you, you 
they've been all over him all evening long and all of a sudden wham he got a little bit of space he broke a tackle he broke a tackle by Kevin Anderson out there ran over by him and when that was when that happened it was all over you think those Arkansas fans will be talking about that fourth and one from the 50 and they gambled it through the pass they had the man out in the open and Bobby Joe Edmond couldn't hang on to it and he had the defender beaten by four or five yards they might have pinched him in the corner maybe around the five yard line or something but that was a great shot for Arkansas well there are only a few opportunities you get during the course of a football game generally in a tight game like this a couple of opportunities to make those particular plays if you make the plays you win if you don't make the plays you lose I tell you, we're supposed to pick the most valuable of each team. I don't know who you give it to. Oh, my God. Now he did it again. He went in there. That's Carl Miller. Miller what, a, what a run back by Miller. He nearly had disaster again. He, he caught the ball. His momentum carried him into the end zone. And then... You see, the impetus was, was on him. He yeah, didn't run it in there. He didn't know. He wasn't sure. Here it is. He, he wasn't, wasn't sure. Too sure. No, he didn't know. He said, well, should I or shouldn't I? No, <laughs> he should. Well, let's not take a chance. Let's come out of there. And he does an exceptional job of running once he makes his mind up what he's going to do. He broke a couple of tackles right there. And almost with another block, if he had that block right there, he had been off in a foot race. Well, they're on their 32-yard line with a first down Arkansas on 529 to go. Here's the screen coming up. That's Bobby Joe Edmonds. Edmonds ripped it away. Still going. And he carries the ball up to his 42-yard line. 11-yard gain. That time, he had his offensive lineman out in front of him. There was a screen earlier where he really took a terrific hit because the offensive lineman did not get out there. That time, they had three linemen in front of him. They got out in front of him. He picked up the first down. Arkansas now they've got a strike in a hurry with five minutes and 19 seconds remaining in this football game. They got to get on the board on first down the draw play. Derek Thomas Thomas is over to 50 and to the 48 yard line of Auburn stopped by John Daly. Arkansas also at this stage of the game when they're down 21 to 9 they've got to start hurrying up because they've got five minutes remaining in this football game. They've got to get in and out of that huddle. Now there's a 25 second clock but you don't want to take any more than about eight or ten seconds to get that playoff. That's why it's so important that the coaching staff on the sidelines get that play in a hurry. Auburn did a good job of running that clock out. They go in the huddle they'd watch it. They come out with about eight or seven seconds to go to get the snap off. They're short by an inch or two. Then with about three seconds to go they had a quick snap and, and three plays like that they used up. Uh, about a minute and a half. Yeah, they did. The good thing about the situation with the 25 second clock, the quarterback is looking right at it, so he knows at all times how much time he's got on the clock. This is short yardage situation. The quarterback can just sneak it because if they get the first down, they'll stop the clock in order for them to move the chain. So what they ought to do is have two plays called right now in the huddle. Taylor has had 12 for 25 tonight, 132 yards. He's throwing two interceptions. This is a second down and inches to go. They get more than that. And they go to the Arkansas, uh, Auburn 43 yard line. Pat Thomas hitting Derek Thomas. Clock stops while they move the yard line up. And now it's first down Arkansas on the Auburn 43 yard line. Play is in the huddle, but there they are. They're getting out of that huddle in, in a hurry. That's good coaching. You know, you have to anticipate things. Be have to be ready in a situation like this. 21 to 9, Auburn ahead. This pass complete to the 35 to Looters. Looters goes out of bounds smartly on the no, they say he stayed in bounds. 15 yards. They said he stayed in bounds. There's Looters. I think probably what they thought is when he when he got tackled, his knee hit the ground or hit hit the ground in bounds, and then they was driven out of bounds. Arkansas is on the Auburn 28. 434 to go. They wind the clock up. Auburn leading by 12. Taylor has it down. Here's a reverse coming up. It's going nowhere. Maybe he shakes it loose. And that's Rodney Port. They put him in 
Carr for that special play. He's a speedster. Pat Thomas made the hit on him. Now they spot the ball down on the 17 yard line. Another first down, and the clock is stopped. Well, that was a good run because really Auburn was not fooled by that because the Alcantain men were there to make the play, but he wisely cut back inside, picked up the first down. That stopped the clock until they moved the chains. Now they're up on the ball once again, getting ready for a play. Clock is moving. Taylor throws the ball out of bounds. He he had one choice there. He was looking to the split end who was running an out pattern. He faked the ball, and if he was open, he's going to get him the football. If he wasn't open, he's going to throw it away. The important thing right now is that clock. 4.02 remaining in this football game. And I believe uh, Arkansas still has two timeouts remaining. 21-9 Auburn. Arkansas on the Auburn 17. Look out. Oh, he is slammed down there by number 40, Arthur Johnson. He came blitzing through the strong safety. And he came from his blind side. That's the problem with that uh, flex bone or wishbone offense. Now, right now, now, Auburn is not concerned about the run, really. They hope they will do run, so they tackle him, keep him in bounds, and that clock will be winding down. But when that quarterback has to fake the ball to somebody, he had his back to the safety who was coming through, and he made the stop. Third down and 18. That's the second sack by Auburn. You're not going to fool anybody down here with any type of play fake. Third and 18. Screen. Edmonds out of bounds on the 25-yard line. Bobby Joe Edmonds was hit and smothered by Arthur Johnson. There he is again. That's two plays in a row. He's come up with big plays. The screen never really developed. They'd had a little more time to let that screen develop. The offensive lineman get out in front of the ball here. They might have had something. We talk about Arkansas's defense. Auburn played a strong defensive game oh, they really from, all the way right from the opening kickoff. I guess the thing is that Auburn had so many opportunities in this football game, particularly in the first half to put it away and they didn't. And we overlooked the fact that Auburn defensively really has done a terrific job. They they had a touchdown scored on him, but it was because of the fumble. Taylor's throwing deep. He's got a man open. It's a touchdown to Sheebus. A great little receiver. James Sheba scores. With 3-10 to go. I can't believe they let him get open in a situation like this. They knew they had to throw the football. The quarterback rolled to the left, but he ran a corner route. Otherwise, he's coming down. He's going to make a move to the inside. He's going to get his man turned, and by that time, it's all over. Man-to-man -man coverage. Now he's got the wide side of the field to run to. He's wide, wide open. That's, look at that concentration. He looked that ball right into his hands. He hasn't dropped a pass this year. Leading yardage receiver of the Southwest Conference and only a sophomore. I'm really surprised that they turn him loose man to man down there in a situation like they're in right now where they have to throw the football. Here's the kick. And it is blocked, blocked, partially blocked, no good. They'd have to get a touchdown anyway. Yeah, but that was a big play. Now it's a six point difference. Yeah. They got to score a touchdown and then get the extra point. Let's take a look at that again. Here it is. Quarterback throwing the football. Really an excellent throw, as you can see it flying through the night air in Memphis at the Liberty Bowl Stadium. Good concentration, as you mentioned, but he had the wide side of the field to work in. I'm surprised that the defensive back really was playing him to the inside. He was giving him the outside, which I don't understand because the outside was the wide side of the field. That is assistant coach right now. They're having a dive down here all the second half. They could be talking about a fishing trip somewhere. You know, you don't know what they're talking I about. I doubt that, though. I, I doubt that. Now, what do we do? 3-10 remaining. Do we onside kick this football or kick it away? Well, the way they'd held it, except for that one explosive run by Bo Jackson, you almost think they'd kick it deep, stop them, and then try and get some decent field position. 21 to 15, Auburn. Auburn won eight, lost four this year. Arkansas, the surprise team of the Southwest, won seven, lost three, and tied one. 
Well, I would assume that Auburn is looking for the onside kick, and they're going to have a lot of people 10 yards away from that football. Well, but you know, Lenny, they're up to their old habit. Twice this year, they scored three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. They've already got two touchdowns here in the fourth quarter against Auburn. Now, Auburn, look, if they take a look, they're, yeah. they're out there anticipating the onside kick. They got 11 men up there. 11, uh, 10, men. 10 men. 10 men up there. And they all got quick feet and quick hands. So they kick it deep. The Auburn ball first down in the 20 yard line. Better get, get on that ball. <laughs> yeah. That's a free ball. <laughs> I'm sure that probably they told the kicker now if they get everybody up front they kick it away but if they don't we'll onside kick it and try to get the football time remaining in the game there's a scoring drive of Arkansas 68 yards nine plays 25 yard pass to Shebus and Brad Taylor now watch Auburn use this clock unless Arkansas calls the timeout. The clock will not start, I don't believe, until the snap of the That's ball. That's right, but the second down, unless yeah. Arkansas called it, they'll run it right down and take 24 seconds, 23 seconds. There's a pitch to Bo Jackson. Pretty good man to get the yeah, football to. He's too. got a first down for him. He's out to the 33-yard line. Nick Miller and David Brazel. Brazel's been tremendous linebacker today. Jackson didn't get going here until about midway in the fourth quarter. I would be looking for Jackson now. If anybody's going to get that football here late in the football game, you know, with uh, three minutes to go, Auburn wants to get the ball to Bo Jackson. 82 yards for Bo, and he's got most of them in the last five minutes. 39 for a touchdown to break it open. Lots is going. That's Brazel stopping Bo Jackson. David Brazel. Arkansas apparently feels that Brazel, they're going to get the football to Bo Jackson, too, because they're the one that they're looking at. They got great penetration that time. And here they are coming up front. They're pinching down. The linebacker's blitzing through, as you can see. Basil coming through. He's playing Bo Jackson all the way. You could see that he was going right for Bo Jackson. Jackson didn't have the ball. He was still going to get hit by Basil. Basil's been the leading tackler all year for Arkansas. Second down, 10. They run that clock down again. Oh, they got a hole. Good block. Good block. Good block. Good block. Campbell of Florence, Alabama. Carried Nick Miller right with him. For the Auburn 45, and Auburn gets another first. That was a good call because Arkansas was really pinching down to the inside, and he came off tackle. As you can see, there's a good block, good block on Basil. They really wiped him out. And the back coming through, picking up excellent yardage. Arkansas was anticipating inside, and they were pinching their people inside and having the linebacker go to the outside, and the linebacker was blocked, creating a good hole. Tommy A.G. has the call, the fullback. Basil stopped him again. Three tackles for Basil in the last four carries. We're down to a minute 25. That's Pat Dye. He's coached at East Carolina, at Wyoming, and now Auburn. He was eight years under Bear Bryant as his chief recruiter. Coached the linebackers, had four All-American linebackers. Bowl games are nothing new to him. He went to nine bowl games in a row under Bryant. And this is his fourth, third bowl game in four years at Auburn. And he's undefeated in a bowl game. He beat Boston College. Arkansas calling and timeout now. Two timeouts they had. They, they, they took one now. They got one left with 56 seconds remaining. The executive producer is Fred Botvinick for Cat Sports. Been produced by Jim Silman. Directed by Billy McCoy, the associate director, John Calabrese, associate producer, Jake Jacobson, our stage manager, Rose Anderson, broadcast associate, Mark Brown, technical director, Dave Mazza, and the audio, Felix Azuska. Marty. What a 
thank Marty Aronoff also for the statistics. Anthony Kimbrough of Arkansas, assistant up there in the booth, and David Clay of Auburn. 56 seconds to go. 21-15 Auburn. They've had the ball. They've kept it. Our Mercedes-Benz most valuable players, Bo Jackson for Dave Auburn and Dave Bazil. Bazil, the linebacker for Arkansas. Here's Jackson. Jackson with a 50. Goes ahead with it. About two yards short of the first down. The clock moving. That field says call time. Right, that's it. Last David time Basil out. again on the tackle. Jackson in the first half at 21 yards. In the second half, he's made 68 yards, 89 in the game. One of them, the biggest play of the game, a 39-yard run for a touchdown to break it open. And Arkansas came back. I remember earlier, Arkansas had a fourth and one in the 50-yard line with about six minutes to go. They threw a surprise pass, wide open, Bobby Joe Edmonds, and they couldn't hold on to it. All right, right now it's a situation, 47 seconds remaining, a fourth down situation. Auburn's got a punt. They will probably go after the punt, try to block the punt and get good field position because they are going to get the football back. They will not show until the last instant if they're going to go after the punt. They've got one man back on the 10-yard line, and that is, of course, the man you were talking about, Bobby Joe Edmonds, who dropped that, the pass earlier in this quarter. They have been close games here. Last they're, year was 19 to 18. They're going after it. They got to go after it. Notre Dame over Boston College. This has been a tight one. Look at all those guys up there. Yep. And it gets it away. Edmonds has the ball on the 13-yard line of Arkansas. 39 seconds to play. Good job by that. That punting team of Auburn, they knew that they were going to go after the punter. They knew that they had to seal the inside, and they did that. A good job by them getting that the punt off now. 39 seconds to go. No timeouts left. Do bear in mind, though, in college football, when you get a first down, you do stop the clock to move the chain. We're talking about Pat Dye. He beat Michigan in the Sugar Bowl last year, and he's about to win this one unless Arkansas puts on a miracle play. So he'll be undefeated in bowl games. Two wide receivers. They're going to have four men out right now for a pass. He throws it. Oh, he keeps it out of bounds. bounds. Get out of bounds, the coaches say. Bobby Joe Edmonds nearly ran back in the middle of the field. Uh, he started back, then he said, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> we have no Robinson timeouts lead. left. Let's get out of here. Here it is. That only took a couple of seconds on the clock. 31 seconds to go. Auburn leading by six. First down, Arkansas is at the 27-yard line. Arkansas, they have a flex bone offense, but you're going to look out there now, and you're going to see two wide receivers. You're going to see probably two guys in the slot. Yes, you are, are up on the wing position. They're going to have people out right now, four or five people. Three down right linemen for Auburn. He dances away, he throws it again to the sideline, and this one is good to the 30-yard line. Derek Thomas, a three-yard gain. That took five seconds. Yeah, he waited too long. If he was going to throw that pass, he waited too long to get rid of it. 21-15, Auburn. 25 seconds left to play. They got to go downfield. Downfield in the middle would be the area to go to because, as I said, they do stop the, the clock when they move the chain. They've got the defense spread out. And they've got five uh, people that get out in the pattern right now. Now, going to have a man open. He smothered. No good to Looters. Jamie Looters, number 26. That well, he, took nine seconds. He had three defensive people all, all over there. He tried to buy some time by rolling out, but defensively for Auburn, they're, they're telling those people back there, hey, do not. And I mean, do not let anybody get behind you. 16 seconds remaining. A third down play for Arkansas. Ball on their own 30. Brad Taylor, 17 out of 32, 188 yards. Now they better hurry up. They got 15 seconds remaining on the 25 second clock. Got to get up and get that playoff. They're doubling up everybody out there on the outside, and they've got a man in the center field way, way deep. Uh, he's hit and dropped. 
Yeah, the run is a flag down. Could be face pass. Could be a face pass. Nate Hill, 99. Gerald Williams, 98 on him. Yeah, face masking. What it does, too, it stops the clock with 10 seconds remaining. They need a miracle. This moves it up to the 45-yard line. The referee was back there. He was right on top of the situation. Here it is right there, as you can see. That's dangerous, too, when you get a hold of somebody's face mask and break somebody's neck. Well, let's see. Flutie did it against Miami. But Seven seconds, six seconds. He just quickly throws it out of bounds to stop the clock. Three seconds. Now they're down to one more play. This is it. And that's it. They'll throw that ball as far as he can, I think. They kept talking about what a strong army is. I think we're going to find out right now, Kurt. And you're going to look at you're going to see the Auburn defensive backs. They're all the way back. They haven't even come up in the line of scrimmage. They're all the way back to the 25-yard line and walking back. I think it's a good move. Get back there near the goal line. Get three or four people back there and make sure that they have to throw in front of you. I, still, make the tackle. I, I still don't know how Gerard Phelan got him back of the Miami Damn. defenders in the end zone. You couldn't let, let him catch the ball. You know, but how could you let him get behind you? There you are. Take a look at the defense back to see where they are. David Brazzles had nine tackles and six assists. Last play of the game coming up. 21 to 15 Auburn. Now flags are down. Well, they take too much time. I don't think they want to get in any better field position. They can't be better. They'll come back the other way. Legal delay. Five yards. That's it. That's the ball game. Bobby Joe Edmonds caught the ball. He caught 10 passes in the game. Pat Guy coming over. Auburn beats Arkansas. 21-15. The first time the schools have met on the gridiron. And Auburn's the winner. We'll be back for a final word on the 1984 Liberty Bowl in just a minute. This is the Cat Sports Network. Mercedes-Benz most valuable players for the 1984 Liberty Bowl. Bo Jackson for Auburn. David Basil, the linebacker for Arkansas. Well, I'll tell you, they did contain Bo Jackson, but in the end, he was the guy that broke this football game wide open. 88 yards and two touchdowns. And bear in mind, he only had eight yards on eight carries in the first half. Basil had to, was involved in 15 tackles. So this is Kurt Gowdy along with Len Dawson saying goodbye from the Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium in Memphis, Tennessee. Final score again, Auburn 21, Arkansas 15. This is the Cats Sports Network.